It's amazing. It's huge. Wait, hold on. I was farther back than I thought. Yes, it's not that big. But this thing is awesome, guys. We just reviewed this bike, and it has been one of the best e-bikes we've ever done. It's also the most powerful. Big surprise. And look at this. I have a stylish helmet made by Nito. What is this thing called, anyway? This is the X26. By what? A new. A new? With a question mark. A new. So, anyway, guys, this is the A new X26. It's got suspension here, adjustable. Suspension here, suspension here. So for big guys, it's good. It will suspend you. Also, we have fat tires. As you can see, they're made by Chow Yang. And we have good hydraulic disc brakes, front and back. We have a beautiful screen that actually does work. There is a power button under the seat here. We're gonna show you how this bike works quick. And then we're basically gonna let you guys figure it out for yourself whether or not you like it. This thing twists and it unplugs. This whole thing comes out. There's also another plug right here. Camera crew is gonna come to the other side. See the plug? Mm -hmm. If you want, you can move from this plug to this plug and guess what that does for you? It uses the battery that's inside of here, accessible by opening here, okay? And if you're all by your lonesome, you can do it, okay? And then you need a key to unlock this. So there's two keys, one key so you can lock the chair and one key so you can unlock this thing, okay? So if you wanna take this battery out, there's a handle that flips up and you put the key in and it unlocks and the whole dang thing slides out, okay? We're not gonna do it, there's a little button right here. That comes down, it's actually a latch, okay? So we're gonna close this back up, easy peasy. And that's your backup battery, folks. So it's another huge battery. This is dual battery. The first, of, the first of the two batteries is right here, though. So if this is unlocked, you can see there's a tab to keep it locked if you so choose to use it. All you have to do is press that down, although I must admit it's a little bit hard to get the keys in there. And then this thing, power on, power off. You twist here, and this thing comes undone. And you're like, why do I have this weird coil cable? Okay, the reason you have the weird coil cable is because then you can plug in here. You can operate the bike to get you home if you extend the range of the bike a little bit too far. I found the easiest way to do it is to go around the front like that, snap it in. It works really nice because it's out of the way and otherwise, if you go back here, you might get into your wheel, which would be bad. There's also a back seat for other things. Cargo. Cargo. Definitely not kids. No. No kids. However, I must say, if you were to have a kid ride on this, there's not really anywhere for their feet. So I will definitely not gonna put a link in the description for these fold down steps that might be able to mount on those 14 millimeter. Um, we definitely will not. We definitely will not do that. So um, maybe we will. Uh, a couple things about assembly. We had to adjust this a lot. I have it tipped. You can have this thing all the way out here. So if you're a big guy, I'm a big guy. I just wanna show you how big this one will go. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> if you're riding a bike like that, you're huge, okay? I don't wanna get in a fist fight with you. If you're riding it like me, oh, by the way, that thing comes completely out. And then you can charge it inside, out of the weather, or you can collect it so that somebody can't as easily steal your bike. However, there's plenty of ways to keep this thing latched together with a normal bike lock if you choose to do that, okay? Also, there is no way to lock the power off on this bike. So that is a good security feature. You can lock the battery in the bike and you can lock the other battery in the bike, but you can't lock the power off on the bike, okay? So there's a power button here. Let's show the people how to do this. We've got an eight speed gearbox, Shimano gearbox. And if you look at here, we've got uh, Logan uh, hydraulic brakes with mineral oil. And you can see the derailleur down here. I'm sorry, yeah, this is an, an Altus Shimano derailleur. It's got a HLT 100 
This is the shock in the center which is pretty amazing. And you can see all these wires going back. The controller is located in here. If you would ever need to fix anything, you open this up, okay, pull that forward, open it up. This is one of the best features, guys, this folding bike. It's not really a folding bike for storage, in my opinion. One, two, three, four screws, you get it out, you can fix what you need to fix. Guys, we have been doing these e-bikes long enough that we have fixed a number of them for a number of different reasons. And if you ever need to fix one, they're very easy. Okay, I thought it was gonna be terrible the first time we had an issue and it was actually with a competitive brand. I don't wanna name any names right now, but we had a screen that went bad on us. So we had to replace it. Um, and then also all the cables and everything are tied together nicely, but serviceable by taking these off if you ever need to. Very easy, just one at a time. As I was saying earlier, you do have to make adjustments to make this bike fit you. I have my crosshairs almost right in the middle here. Make sure you torque these down, okay? Tight. The provided tool is not tight enough. I tried that in the unbox build radio setup. It's an unboxing build. But it just wasn't enough. I had to get out other tools and torque them down a lot. Not a little, I'm talking a lot, okay? So do it or you're gonna regret it because you're gonna crash. Otherwise, I gotta say, this thing is beautiful. It's got a brake light. The brakes are regenerative as well if you want. You can turn that on and off. Not sure how great it's gonna show up in the daylight. There is an automatically turning on and turning off light. There's also reflectors both front and back, which is nice. I like that it's got reflectors and lights. Mm -hmm. There's also a light on the seat, okay? So the seat power switch on the battery, when you press it, Sometimes it won't always stick all the way down. You got to press it until it stays down. It's a spring return momentary push button. So you push down and it stays and then you push it to unstay and then that shuts it off. You can also turn it on and off with this button by leaving that on all the time. This will glow all the time. It will glow brighter when it's on, but in the daylight, you can't tell. No honky, no worky. Press the power button for a few seconds. It turns on. Beautiful display, one of the nicest we've ever seen, and we may need to roll into the shade to show you the rest of this setup, which we're gonna do now. Okay, so as you can see, we have a very nice display. It's color, it's easy to read, and all you have to do to get in and out of the menu is press these buttons at the same time. We're gonna show you the features first. Light on, light off, light on, light on, and it's automatically turning off. Why? Because it's bright out here, it knows. You can shut that feature off, so it only responds to input, okay? There's info, trip time, max speed, average speed, total distance, trip distance, power. That is where I want to be, here's why. I can see that this is a 1200 watt bike by watching the wattage. And here's the thing I can tell you, 1200 watts is enough wattage to bring me and my human flesh and pedaling up a hill with a slight acceleration, so long as it's not a big hill. It's also enough to keep you from losing speed. You can do assist mode or you can do thumb throttle. You cannot do both simultaneously on this bike, but I don't care because really it's not a big deal. Also, this is easily adjustable for convenient, comfortable angles. I did have to adjust every single thing on here like five times, it but was it is annoying. all adjustable. Yeah, so that being said, we're gonna do our normal rides. We're gonna show you the rest of those features and we want you guys to stay tuned. We'll give you a ride on so you can see the display. I admittedly am gonna say this, I can see this very good. You may not be able to see it as good on camera, but I can see it very good both in the sun and in the shade. Some of these displays are very much inferior to this. It's a full color screen. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It says sport mode right now. If you press and hold info, it goes to assist. That's pedal assist. This still works. Nope. Oh, I'm in speed zero. Let's see if it works. Nope. And then this, normal. Normal goes to about 500 watts, okay? Then when you go to sport, it'll go all the way up to the full 1200 watts. You might as well never even use it in normal, okay? It is a waste of time, okay? If you want assist, 
and you want to save some power by helping mechanically as a human using your 150 watts or 200 watts that you can produce while pedaling under full strength, then that will help. The 1200 watt motor will help a lot. It's the cool thing about riding an e-bike is the first time you pedal and you realize, wow, I'm like superhuman. Um, but I got to say, I have learned that I prefer to just have a thumb throttle or a spin throttle. I prefer the thumb throttle. I also like that this one is in a position where you're not pulling into it as you accelerate. Mm -hmm. That causes this self-induced oscillation if you're trying to do slow maneuvering, okay? We don't have that problem. Also in speed zero, as with other bikes, you can press and hold the button and it will walk, okay? Now that only puts out about 100 watts of power and it is a little bit faster than walking pace for me at level. However, if you're going up a hill, that's generally where you're gonna use that and you're gonna get a little bit less speed out of it. Okay, so lots of things to consider. This is very hokey. It's not very thick, but it works. The seat is comfortable. It's got a vent, but there is definitely some slop in this fabric. So I wasn't impressed with that. In terms of adjustability, I have my seat all the way forward. I'm six one and a half, six two, if I'm buying life insurance, okay? This thing shifts all the way back. You can gain maybe three inches. This shifts all the way forward. You can gain probably eight inches of reach. You can be a big person and ride this. However, you can't be a small person and ride it. And this hinge point is big and it's right about where you'd like to have a little extra room if you're a dude, okay? <laughs> And I'm talking the biological kind that actually have equipment there that you don't want to hit. It's not as bad as some bikes. I'm serious. We've had bikes that are a lot worse or a lot higher. So whoever's designing these, you might want to take a play card from biology and move that down just a hair if it's going to be an ambidextrous bike, a unisex bike. And I'm almost 5'8", and I can barely straddle it. She can barely straddle it. Now, I can get on there comfortably. Yeah. It's definitely higher than some bikes I've ever had, but I like big frames. I like 26 inch tires. Mm -hmm. I like four inch or whatever you can get, the bigger the better for me, because we ride off road all the time, okay? That's actually a lot of what we do. And then we have a beautiful mile long stretch. It goes up to a cemetery or however long it is, half a mile. And so we go up to the cemetery and we do a little U pat path and we come back and we just ride our property. That's what we do because we have a big piece of property. And we love it that way. There's also a bike path behind us. So it's a great bike for getting around. You're gonna get lots of mileage. I never even quote mileage, because I'm gonna tell you this. If I am 300 pounds and you are 200 pounds, you are going to get a lot more mileage than me. If I am 300 pounds and you are 120 pounds, you are gonna get a lot, lot, lot more mileage than me. So I don't even worry about the mileage claims. I worry about power and delivery of power. Yeah. Those are the two functions that I really, really care about on an e-bike. The other function is I want lights. We yeah. use lights, we ride at night all the time. Almost every day that we're riding, it's at night, okay? So that being said, I also like thickness of tire and I won't do anything less than 26 anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. we've done 20 inches and I just look like a giant on them. So also the frames tend to get a lot more compressed. However, this is a long and tall bike. So let me give you an example. If you're storing this bike, and the way I usually do it is I will walk the bike up vertical. First of all, they're heavy when you get two batteries. Look how tall that is compared to my body. Mm -hmm. It is very tall. However, even with the kickstand out, I can roll it between our car, our family car and my work truck. And I have no problems getting through and it's tight, okay? Now I can walk it, it's very easy to control. And then of course I can bring it down, it's easy to control. So if you're gonna store your bike, you're gonna to wanna to be able to get it moved around easily. The brakes on this bike are better than the other e-bikes we've had in the past, but they are admittedly very similar. They just happen to be new. I did have to shim my wheel. I took the spacer and moved it to the inside. Otherwise, my brake didn't line up. Then I released here and here and adjusted my brake so that it would not rub. I was not rubbing the pad, I was rubbing the bottom of the assembly on the disc. Check that. Even if it's rubbing a little, it will take a lot of the wind out of your sails. So make sure you fix that. 
Also, it's going to wear out your brake pads if you're rubbing your brake pads on there. Okay, as far as the motor, the hub assembly is fine. I like that the wire is protected nicely over here. That's good. That's not always the way it goes. Sometimes it is. We've had pretty good luck with this one so far. We don't have a lot of mileage on it, but I always like to test these things a little bit if we can. And on this one, I had so much adjusting to do. I literally put miles on this bike getting it adjusted. Okay, because I started out here and I'm just like, I, I could barely turn because I would have to like let go of that side to make the turn if it was sharp. Also, one other thing to keep in mind, look at this. That's as sharp as you can turn with this type of assembly. Okay, I'm hitting the assembly on itself. Some people are not gonna be okay with that. They're gonna want this to be underneath so that they can make a turn and go really, really, really sharp. Now, I don't know why you're gonna be turning that sharp, but there are people that do tricks and things like that. Just keep that in mind. I am not one of those people, by the way. No. So if you guys want a bike that's powerful, that's big enough for you as a big person, that's gonna handle 300 pounds, which this one is rated for over 300 pounds. And it will handle it, by the way. We've done other bikes that have been rated for like 270 and I've been able to get away with riding them, but we always have problems with power. This one has been good on power, but it's still not a motorcycle. It is not a, you know, 7,000 watt e-bike that will spin and put you up in the air. It's not gonna do that. So don't plan on it. It is gonna be a, a, an assistant to your good experience, okay? Also, this is where you plug in your charger, right here. And you'll note, there's only one place to plug in now. That's because you have to actually remove this battery to charge it. Now, keep in mind, you're probably not gonna ever use that battery unless you run out of battery. So once a season or two times a season, you might wanna think about just plugging in here and consuming that battery and then you can open it up, pull it out and charge it overnight. It's not a big deal, very easy. Charge times are a couple of hours, depends on how much you used, okay? Ours was at like 72%. Okay, that also reminds me, there is a charge life indicator here, which is really handy. It does tell you, and it's not a bunch of BS. Some of these things, I swear they calibrate them so they look at the very, very bottom range of your cells. And I hate that. I just wanna know how much battery life I have left. This one's gonna to totally take away any of your risk of running out of battery because you've got basically a full second battery, okay? It's maybe a little bit smaller, but it's still there, okay? The specs will be in the video description. If you follow the link and you buy one of these, you'll support Brian Phillips RC and all the things we do to support RC and obviously e-bikes because you guys love e-bikes. We know you love e-bikes. By the way, if you went to Joe Nall and you saw us there, hey, it was cool to meet you. You may have noticed that there was like 4,000 of these things. Yes running every direction, of cutting off in front of you when you were trying to drive down the road in your actual car. So that was kind of exciting for me. But I wish I had my e-bikes. So don't tell us you don't like e-bikes. Yeah, we've because seen you we've seen them. you riding them. And also, I must say, um, e-scooters, e-bikes, all that stuff, we love them. First time I ever rode one, I thought this is the stupidest, most lamest thing I've ever seen. Why would anybody want to do that? What are we on, ninth, 10th? These things are so much fun, guys. They are really, really, really fun. You won't believe it until you try it. I'm going to tell you one thing that you will believe, and this is something. If you try an e-bike and you try to buy a cheap one and you're my size, just don't bother. Get a good one that is going to handle your weight. If you get a small one, you'll be disappointed and you'll end up letting your wife use it all the time. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have to buy, and, and if you got a wife that's half your size, if you got a wife that's that's a string bean and you're a big dude like me, don't get the same bike. You can get different bikes, yes. okay? There are different models that are offered in different sizes. You don't need to get the big, huge, heavy bike for the wife if she's smaller than you. Just get the smaller one. It's going to be better. And I'm not saying that because I want to pick on anybody. I mean, I'm big. I've got this girlish figure. I worked hard for this. Here's the thing. If you, if you want to get a bike that's the right size, you're going to find that it's easier to manage the braking on. It's going to be lighter to handle. And when you're storing it, it's going to be easier to get it in and out of the storage point, okay? So that's why I say I don't go for less than 26-inch wheels. I like fat tires. If you get thin tires, they're going to be way more energy efficient. And there's going to be a lot less weight. These things are, da these things are darn near 100 pounds mm -hmm. in the box, okay? This one's not quite 100 pounds out of the box. 
but I think we're in the 70s, I think, 80s. I think it's over 80. Again, specs will be listed in the video description. Just follow the link, you can see all the specs. Okay, this is not about specs, this is about our findings. And we're gonna ride it now, we're gonna get going. I'm just gonna show you, this thing, I have had it going 31 miles an hour, it's a very conservative, easy ride, no problems. We'll ride down to the end of the street, we'll ride back, we'll give you a couple clips as I go by, and then we'll take you along for a ride, we'll do a little off-road together, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna show me getting on the bike. Obviously, really robust kickstand, if I didn't already mention that. The only thing I don't like about the robust kickstands is that when they're robust like this, they are pretty much in one position only. There's not a lot of adjustment on there um, in terms of pivots and stuff like that. It's not a big issue because these are heavy bikes. You don't want them to fall over, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go into power mode three. I have, oh, we need to show them the setup menu quick. Okay, oh. I'm sorry guys, I almost forgot. So we have a horn, it's pretty aggressive. Don't scare your neighbors. We've got the light button we talked about. It does dim the screen when you turn it on. It's on auto mode right now. That's why it shuts off. Okay, pressing and holding the plus, oh, plus and minus, adjust your sport uh, mode. I have it set from zero to three. I'll show you that here in a minute. Pressing and holding info changes between the modes, assist, normal, and sport. I like being on wattage because then I can see how much wattage we're pulling, okay? And then what I wanna do is, actually we're gonna, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press and hold the up and the down, or the plus and the minus, and then this is the easiest menu ever. Plus and minus moves you up and down, info does the thing, and then back is just like right there, okay? So clear data, I'm not gonna do that. Set up, set unit, we have ours in miles. You can have it in kilos, it comes in kilometers. Set brightness, auto, there's five and auto, okay? I like five, I sets, okay? So I's in the center if you can't do that. Auto power off, I have mine set to 30 minutes. You can go as much as, I think you can go up to like 50. No, you can go up even higher. 60, oh good Lord. Okay, so I'm gonna set mine to 30. 30 minutes is a long time, you guys might not like that. Um, I think it comes at like five minutes or so. I just don't like changing settings. Speed limit. I set mine all the way to the top, it comes set lower, okay? If you have laws that you have to follow, change those, okay? Back, then personalization. This is cruise, it is currently off. You can turn that on and you see the indicator always stays on. You'll notice it's working because when you let go of the throttle, it keeps moving. I'm gonna turn it off for the sake of our test. ACF, I forget what that stands for. Um, oh, the regenerative. Re regenerative brakes, yeah. that's right. And then auto headlights currently on, you can turn that off. Power set, this is the modes, okay? You can set 50, 75, 99. It comes at like 96, okay? I'm gonna tell you this, if you set that to 100, it will stop putting out power when you give throttle. I don't know why that is, it's kinda weird. Okay, so I've set it to this setting. I'll show you the other modes. See how it grays? If you do something wrong, it won't let you do it. So you gotta enter into it and then you can go one through nine. That means you won't have an off setting. Zero through nine, one through seven, zero through seven, one through five, zero through five, one through three, zero through three. I want zero because then I can turn the bike into a mode where it's no assistance at all if I'm in assist mode. And also I always run at the top speed anyway, okay? So I want the least to have to scroll through, mm -hmm. okay? So now I can acknowledge that and I can go back by going I, and then you can walk all the way down or you can walk up, okay? Back, back, system info, okay? It shows the HMI, human machine interface version 4.1.1. Yours might be different. And then back takes you out. It'll also time out eventually. Easiest setup ever, yep. okay? You don't have to remember a bunch of weird passwords and stuff and parameters, it's just spelled out for you. And that's part of the reason why I almost forgot to show it because it's really easy. All right guys, you're here to see this bike and if it's any good. Okay, here's my thoughts at the beginning. It's good, it could use more power just like every other bike. I would just assume have a 2500 watt motor or better yet, let's do 5000, why not make it burn out? And by the way, everybody that does these burnouts on these stupid ads, they're not on the bike when they do it. So they're like, oh, watch this, I can make it spin. You know what, that's a bunch of BS. You're never gonna do that in real life. So I do things on this channel because I wanna see if it works. So without further ado, I'm in sport mode, level three, 
meaning I'm not even gonna do normal, it's a waste of your time. Normal just gives you half as much power as you want <laughs> because I want as much as this thing can do all the time. Otherwise, I just ride a lighter bike. Seriously, okay, all right, cover your brakes. That way, if you give throttle, it won't jump out ahead of you, okay? If you do not cover the brakes, it might jump away from you, okay? Be aware, be careful. It's not really that hard. I'm not overthinking this, I just wanna teach you guys. I'm in speed eight. There's a trigger here where my index finger is. That goes up, then there's this on the thumb, it goes down, okay? So thumb goes down, index finger goes up. I'm in speed eight. I'm gonna just show you. See, you do have to spin your, you do have to spin your pedals to keep it switching. It's just a regular Shimano derailleur. Okay, so with, in the eighth speed, I can just give throttle and I don't even have to worry about it, okay? Then I can pedal. I'm gonna bring the speed down to speed level one and let's do a, a hill real quick and then we'll go down. There's a cat. Cat's not scared of that evidently. As you can see, it gets around just fine. That's a pretty steep hill. Okay, I'm giving a thousand watts on that turnaround. Now we're down to almost 800. Now we're down to about, about 969. Okay, so I'm just gonna pedal. I'm at zero watts of power. I'm gonna slowly go down the hill, show you the brakes. Very easy to control, not having to worry about weird balance issues. Now let's turn around and go up the same spot where it's super sharp. Okay. This is a pretty steep hill is why I wanna show this, okay? I'm in throttle now. You can see it's gonna, it's gonna run out of juice about there, okay? Now, if you're at a dead stop on a hill and you pull the throttle and you let go of the brakes, it's not, it's gonna top out. I'm at 600 watts and it pukes. It's like, no way, no super you. So you do have to help it along if you're gonna go up something super steep and from nothing, okay? So I bring this to your attention because if you're big like me, it might make a big difference in your decision. This is a steep hill, guys. That should be, that should be beyond the capability of the bike. So let's see if I can do it while helping. Yep, can't do that, but I can get off. So that hill is too steep at slow speed, okay? But if you're carrying a little bit of speed, I'll show you the same hill. Should be no problem. A little bit, little bit less steep approach. And then I look like I'm superhuman, I'm not. So it's just enough to get you up the hill. All right, so now we're gonna do some braking. It's enough to compress the suspension and I've braked from 31 all the way down to zero. The brakes take a lot longer than on an e-scooter, I can tell you that. Mm. But they feel solid. There's not a lot of play and slop, which is what I hate in brakes. And we haven't had to mess with them a lot, which I like. So now we're gonna go ahead and do some speed tests. Still in first gear, going about 14, 15, 18 miles an hour, braking. So just on a 300 foot driveway, we got to 18 miles an hour, a little bit of pedal assistant, barely any. We're going 14 now, 15, 18, full brakes, and we can stop by the end of the driveway, no problem. So going 18 miles an hour in such a short, short area is pretty fast, guys. I'm not a small guy. Locked up the back wheel, was going 21 miles an hour and was able to stop completely for a comfortable turn. So now we're gonna go on the road and get you some high speed tests. I'll call it out, then I'll let you ride with me.
Okay, so I'm gonna go left and I'll get up the speed and then I'll show you on the way back. Going 15 now. 17. 18. 18.6 seems to have topped out. 1100, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.8, 30.
So I wanted to show you this route I like to take. It's really fun and it gets you moving fast. You get a little bit of air, which is always fun. And puts the pep in your step that you didn't actually thought you had because you might not have if you're like me. There's the camera crew, the elusive. Okay, a little bit of pedaling, a little bit of power. Take it down to this route. A little bit of heavy braking so we don't crash into the barbed wire there. And we'll go around these trees up and over. Super fun route, guys. That's where we pulled a few rocks out the other day. A little technical riding between the trees. Up and down banks and trees and hills and things. And as you can see, you can kind of see the path in the grass. That's from when we filmed and we were pointed too high. A little bit of a technical spot here. Go real slow, show you between the trees. Okay, got a slow, slow, slow here. Don't want to end up in that ravine, it's deep. Deeper than it looks on camera. Yes, I gotta trim that tree, don't I? Okay, yeah. Here we go, guys. Oh yeah, hitting the trees. Don't wanna go down that ravine, it's deep. Oh yeah. Going like 20, that's crazy. 15, sorry, not 20. Okay, now this is our battery electric bike killing hill. Okay, going nine, going eight, gonna get up. Give it a little bit of help, some heavier pedaling, and then back down the hill we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Going 16, 17, 18 miles an hour there. That is fun and rough. But this bike has lots of good travel and suspension. I'd like to soften it a little bit on the front. But honestly, if you're gonna do a lot of on-road, that might not make sense. I'm gonna get up and help it along. Full throttle and full human power. And we're back out of it, keeping our speed about nine miles an hour. Very tall grass, as you can see, we take hay off of this property. So we're gonna zigzag here. Nasty bump there, this is where Mid-American tore everything up to put our power underground. Here we go, coming off the hill. Seep hill, heavy, heavy braking, and we're gonna take a little zig and a little zag, and we're gonna go right down in here. You guys might recognize this from just a few seconds ago. Loving it, guys. Really, really going smooth. Nice, relatively comfortable ride, given this is such a rough road. We're gonna take it down here. That is a big ravine over there. Do not wanna go into it, because that would mean my certain demise. Okay, as you can see, we're keeping our speed up. Going about 10, 15 miles an hour. At the peaks, we're going about 12 right now. A little bit of pedaling around this turn. Oh yeah, so much fun. Technical riding next to trees and in and through trees. We're gonna slow down here. Take this little short detour here. As you can see, you can slow way down. And this is where we first built our first bridge on this property. And boy, it's nice having that power assist but I like the throttle on the stick. I like having the throttle at the press of a thumb. But if you like just riding around, you might like the power assist better. Anyway, also if you guys wanna see that bridge build, we've got some notes and stuff about it early on in our new house build. And this has been four years here at this house as of a couple of days ago. So we're just really getting, getting our teeth sunk into this property. If you've been following us for any length of time, there's all sorts of fun things that we bring ourselves in front of. I'm Brian Phillips RC, and we'd love to have you with us for the ride, literally pun intended. So here we go. A little rough there, a little hard on the, uh, on the butt. So we're gonna take a little, little right-hand turn here, carry our speed, and try to go straight up this hill. As you can see, I knocked the grass down. Obviously not a hay farmer's smartest move. Here we go, taking this turn fast. Don't wanna wipe out on camera, that'd be embarrassing. But I'm used to embarrassment, that's what I do best. All right, here we go, guys. Okay, more technical turns and riding between things. Okay, gonna go up this hill. Very fun, guys, this bike does it all. You're gonna wanna get one. Definitely a good bike, I'm 300 pounds and uh, I'm doing just fine. 
If you're less, you're gonna have an even better time. If I was less, I'm sure I would too. All right, guys, that's probably where we're gonna end it. But as you can see, this bike does all the things you wanted it to do. And then a little bit more, I'm actually gonna take you on a little ride at eighth gear. Gonna look for traffic. You guys can't see because I don't have a helmet cam. I have a chest cam. We're just gonna come out here. One complaint I notice is to get to the horn, you gotta get out of throttle. Not that it's a big deal. I just noticed it was kind of annoying. Okay, so we're gonna come up here and turn around. This of course being our land as well up to the road there. So we'll just turn around here. Oh boy, those clouds mean we're gonna get some weather. What a beautiful day, guys. What a beautiful day for a bike ride. Good job on this bike. Oh yeah. A little heavy braking, we'll stop right here, guys. If you want to get one of these bikes, I highly suggest you do. So if you want to help support the channel, buy this thing from the link in the video description below. If you don't want to buy this thing and you want another e-bike or another product that we've reviewed, you can check them out on brianphillipsrc.com, which is our domain, or you can just click on my face in YouTube and then you can navigate through and see all the different crazy products we've done up to and including leaf blowers, weed whackers, and all sorts of amazing RC aircraft literally thousands of them and we hope you guys enjoyed this video but if you really enjoyed the video or if you didn't give us a thumbs up it'll help us we appreciate you guys being here with us and if you want to throw a special super thanks we always appreciate those but if it's not your cup of tea and you want to do paypal or patreon we have links down below just remember we're friends and family if you're doing paypal who wants to give them 20 percent? not me thanks for watching guys come back for more youtube brad phillips we're gonna unbox things with gloves on. We're ready for the surgery. <laughs> I think this company is called a new, like a new way. That's what we're going with. But we're not sure. So this is the X26. This is how these boxes come. If you order one of these e-bikes, they're in huge boxes. They're oh, awkward to really open heavy. and you're probably gonna wanna get some help. So usually what we start with is needle nose pliers, some lineman pliers, and usually a knife, which ends up not being very useful. Uh, so we're just gonna start with cutting this and that'll just uh, kind of get out of the way. Cut this, cut that. Now, generally with these models, excuse me, not these models, but uh, with the e-bikes, you wanna keep the packaging for a few days just in case something serious is wrong. We've never had one that had something serious. We have had now at least one that had a controller that was bad, not from this company but from another company. And then we have broken them too. <laughs> that probably wasn't the bike. But we still haven't needed to ship the bike back. No. But it is kind of a common practice on some of these bigger pieces of equipment. And uh, just, I would suggest that you do it. It's probably a good, me uh, good measure. This one came move. FedEx ground shipping. Yeah, but which- they are heavy. They're very heavy. I, I can't believe they do ground shipping for either. all these. But yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna peel all these staples out if you want to have the best results now you don't have to actually peel each staple out but this is just what i would suggest you do and it just makes life easier because you're going to have to do it at some point anyway so you might as well do it and if you guys have ever used an industrial stapler you know that you need a lot of them to get the job done especially on big heavy boxes and so this is usually the mark of a quality packaging job and then they tape down there whatever this like the strap which makes is. it kind of awkward to move because i like to move them like this i'll grab the strap yeah pull it and move it because these things are very heavy how heavy is this one i think it's at 104 pounds yeah if i remember right this one did have handles like nice handles on the box the handles are usually integral handles here but sometimes they work sometimes they don't and sometimes they've broken out mm -hmm. by the time you get access to it so just don't plan on the packaging uh, being helpful. So definitely get some help if you need it. And part of the reason we do these unboxes is because they're so big and so weird and you're not sure what to expect. Yeah. But this of course is going to be a sweet and new experience. So we're always excited to do e-bikes. E um, well, at least that makes one of us. Uh, I don't know if you guys are necessarily into it or not, but we're going to just start off and get this thing going. Okay. 
So here goes nothing. So we're gonna open this up. It's generally a charger. It comes in its own box. You don't have to wear gloves, but these are nitro gloves. I just am used to doing it. If you so. wanna be extra cool, you'll wear gloves. Yeah, I don't really care if people think I look cool with gloves. I just wear them because it keeps me clean and I, I just break out from everything. Especially in spring, I already have tons of that stuff that you take to keep from breaking out. This has a drum style connector, as you can see. And then this one here puts out, what does it say? 54.6 volts at three amps. That is a lot of power. This feels like a very stout power supply when oh. they're heavy like that. Yeah. That's a good sign. You want them to be heavy. If they're not heavy, it means they're probably not real, okay? Um, heavy means there's lots of heat sink in it. And that's generally a good thing, good sign. Also, if you are trying to buy an e-bike and you're trying to buy on the cheap, I'm just gonna warn you right now, there are a lot, a lot of cheap e-bikes that are garbage. And that's part of the reason why you watch a review like this. It's not because you just love throwing away three hours of your life, but at the end of the day, if you're making this level of investment, it's nice to get a third party that's not really interested in, you know, whatever they want. We're interested in you, our audience, and almost you guys are probably thinking, yeah, right. You just do this because the, you know, bikes and stuff. No, we have like seven or eight e-bikes now. I don't even, I've lost track. Yeah. We don't need another e-bike. We're doing this because we feel like it's a good value for you, our audience. And it also is something that we're interested in. Obviously we do fixed wing aircraft most of the time, Hullies, quads and all that sort of stuff. But we also really like e-bikes. It's a cool thing that we can do and it kind of has a good crossover. All right, so here comes the pedals some zip ties and an owner's manual in a nice uh, heavy duty bag. So that's always handy. Okay, here's the manual. So that's what that thing looks like. Is that what that looks like? Yeah. Okay. So then we have pedals. I thought this was a white one. This is a gray no, one? No, it was the one with the girl wearing the white outfit. Oh, that's right. And I kept saying it was a white bike, but it's yeah, not actually a no. white bike. So am, do I have to wear spandex too? Yeah, for the bride. I got you an all white leotard. Wow, no. that is gonna be hot. <laughs> okay, so if you look at these, these are cast pedals. Uh, got good texture. I don't see peg adapters or anything. So of course I wouldn't really have that because I don't wear that type of shoe. Logo, I don't know if that's good or bad. Looks like really lots of reflectors. Okay, and then what the heck is this? Oh, it's a tool bag. Okay, so it's got a snap, and then this is what comes in it. Okay, so it looks like a metric double-ended, I would call this a box-end wrench. Somebody told me they aren't called box-end wrenches. I don't know what the heck they're called if they're not box-end wrenches. And then a multi-tip Phillips and flat. So we'll try to use the provided tools until they don't work, okay? And then what we'll do is we will show you what does work. So we got three zip ties of the medium size class. Well, that's a nice and oh, color. For the manual. Hmm. Okay, so that's for the controller. And then this says right versus left. That's very nice that they actually have that listed for us. So that says uh, W, what the heck? So just tell you the way that it spins. Yeah, but they're not stamped Turn right. Turn the pedal to the right. Yeah, I know, but it doesn't It doesn't match what No, this. it doesn't. Okay, so that's totally useless. <laughs> okay. okay, then we have a like huge reflector here, okay? <laughs> and then more plastic, and we're gonna take a sec clean up, come right back. Okay, so we're gonna start with some side cutters. Now that we have the adapter and stuff taken out, what we do in these unbox build radio setups is usually unbox a plane, build it, and then do the radio setup. But obviously this is not a plane, it is a bike. So we reflect that in that there is no radio setup, obviously, but there are different measures of quality that you can tell just by the way a product is packaged. And we try to point those things out and also give you an idea of what to expect. Okay, so this thing's zip tied. I think I'm gonna keep that thing zip tied for now. That's keys, I'm gonna grab those right now. Clip those. They also have a stretchy thing on there. So generally speaking, keys are not etched. That's nice. It's got a 1903 on there. So if you want to steal my bike, that's the number. You can go have a locksmith make one. All right, and then down here, 
These things are usually fairly awkward to take out of the box. And so we like to show you what we did, but then sometimes we make mistakes when we're taking them out. So you can learn from what we do wrong as much as you can learn from watching what we do right, okay? So I think this is the big wheel, but it's still attached. Now we've also found some level of success with actually opening the sides and taking them out that way. I don't know if we're gonna do it this time. This one is a little bit more robust packaging than what we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. It says it's designed in California, made in China. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean other than somebody designed it in California, it's made in China. Designed in California, too expensive to make in California. That's what that means. <laughs> so in case you guys were wondering and you couldn't do that in your own head. But uh, anyway, so this thing is big. It's got some thick tires. Feels like we're gonna have to put some pressure in there. And I'm seeing a zip tie somewhere. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get this out. I like to get all the accessory packages out first. It just makes it less likely you're gonna drop something. This is obviously the chair. Again, these are my tools. These are tools that came in the package so far. Be careful when you cut this one open because it's got a leather seat, it looks like. Ooh, nice. So obviously with these e-bikes, some of them come with some really high quality finishes and others don't. And so what you're gonna wanna do is pay special attention to this sort of thing. Oh, it's nice. Seems like a nice seat. Hmm, can't tell if it's leather or some sort of faux leather, but it's got a nice vent in there for anything that might get sweaty there. Integral springs and protective covers. So that looks nice. Give that a feel. What do you think? Yeah, I think nice. it looks nice, yeah. Okay, and then it's got this clampy style. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it is what it is. And I think that's the way most bikes are anymore. Um, it just, it means almost every time we build one, the seat at some point slides. Cause of course I'm like almost 300 pounds with shoes on and fully dressed with a coat or a light jacket and a helmet. So if you're lighter than me, keep that in mind because it will make an impact on how this bike rides and whether or not it's got enough power to go up and around hills and things like that that we generally do in our unboxes and rides. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this bike will, I will be in size class for this one, uh, but I have been oversized classed on several. And so we do both. And in this case, I think we're gonna be in the realm of possibility. I don't know if we should just lift it up now. I think we could probably do that. Oop, there's one more big thing down here. I can probably get out. Oh, it came out. What is that? Whoa, it's an extra seat. Oh, I forgot about the back here. seat. That's right, so it's like yeah. a passenger seat, right? Is that what that's supposed to be? That looks like a seat that's to me. It looks like. I don't know if it's branded that way or marketed that way, but. I think we're gonna probably use it. Well, I didn't get a white leotard, so I guess we'll <sighs> discuss yeah. that later. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure that one out as we go. Okay, so it looks like we're not attached to the side. Usually this plastic stuff gets broke. So what we might do is I have an option of ripping the sides down and I have an option of lifting it out and I'm sort of torn because I don't wanna damage the wheel coming out but I feel like it's tied on there. Let's see if we can pull it out. No, it's definitely tied to something. See? Mm -hmm. I think what it's going on is it's hanging up on the, on the actual pedal. Oh. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna okay. take this big piece of foam and we're gonna lay this on the ground, okay? So this thing, and we're gonna give some more for it to lay down so that the, the yoke can go on the ground without scratching up our floor. Now, if you're not doing this in your living room or your, uh, your, if you're doing it in your garage, it's probably not gonna be a big issue, but I don't wanna damage the bike. Okay, so let's see if I can grab this and just pull it out. Now you can see this is a big thing. You don't have to do it this way. You can cut seams down. You can let the thing fall open like this, but you need like a one car garage stall to do that then. So I wanna see how bad it is to lift it up. Hold a box maybe? Just, I'm gonna just go straight up. Are okay. you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not very fun. And I don't like that. I think I can get this out though. If I'm careful, see, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't like that because it's catching the wheel and all I have to do is just pull this like that and then I can get the wheel out. Then it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, whoo, that's a pretty wheel. And that's why I wanted to be careful because look at the finish on this thing. Matte black, yeah. looks sweet, nice thin spokes. 
Look at that wheel. I bet it costs a lot to make that thing. Disc brakes, we've been seeing that before. 20 PSI, wow. Mm. Chow Yang. Okay, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's definitely, okay, look, they had protective here. So that'll, it's got a knobby tire. It shouldn't be anything too crazy for an off-road-ish type of bike. We'll lay that down off to the side. Now I should be able to pick it up, but I just wanna make sure I can get it in one shot. So I'm gonna hold here and I'm gonna hold here we are definitely down on the ground. So when I lay this down, I'm gonna have to be super careful and then you'll have to spot me, okay? okay. All right, so here goes nothing. Push down on the box. Okay. So that's awkward. Okay. All right, guys, so we got it out. It wasn't smooth, but it definitely worked. So now it's down on the yoke. It's kind of standing. I just wanna make sure it's not gonna tip over. Man, that is a nice looking bike. It does have a, the kickstand is already assembled and on it. Oh, really? Yeah, can I okay. try to get to it? Yeah, let's do it. Nope, too much. Okay. Let's get to tip it over, pull it back. And that's just because the nature of the front wheel not being on it. Well, so, I can stand here. No, nah, I need to get this forward a little bit. Okay. So, this was protecting it from the box, and it's pretty sturdy stuff. But I just want to roll it forward just a hair. Okay, all right, good deal. All right, so this is part of the reason why I put these gloves on too, is right now, camera crew, if you could hand me the side cutters. So what we're gonna do is we're just start cutting stuff apart and see what we get. So if you guys are thinking about buying one of these for yourself, check out the links in the video description below. The way we make this make business sense it's people that like them and buy them from the links. Help support our small channel here. And we appreciate it if you buy them from the links, if you end up buying one. If you don't end up liking it and you want to show us some support because we talked you out of something you don't like or you don't think you would like when you thought you would and you want to throw us a, a thank you letter, what the heck? I'm confused now. More keys. There's two sets of keys? Why are there two keys? Hmm. That's very weird. Okay, Shimano gear selector. Okay, what else do we have? There's brakes, look really nice. Horn button. Controller, what the heck? Didn't we have another controller? Did we not have one up there? I felt like we did. The directions for the controller. Oh, the brake is tied, so it'll stay on. Nice leather or faux leather handle, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this down gently. Ah, here's the controller. Nope, it's a light. Awesome. Some of these e-bikes, most of them have lights. This one has a big light, which is cool. So I'm excited to see how well that works. We'll try to give you guys some shots in the dark if we can. Okay, and just continuing along. Camera crew is just gonna kind of keep an eye on it if this thing starts tipping. And it looks like this one here Needs to be cut free too. Okay. All right, so the next move I'm gonna wanna do is figure out how to release all this so I can start getting stuff put together. So we're gonna have to button this up. So at this point, now that we have it secured, it's kind of in position. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the instruction manual I'm gonna cut the second set of keys off. I still do not understand the second set though. And it's a different key style. Yeah, it's got like a bunch of Chinese or Japanese or whatever. This one does fold. Do you suppose there's a key? For the frame? For the frame? Or a removal of batteries or something? It's very weird. I don't know. We might take it. We're going to take a second and we'll be right back. All right. So we cleaned up a little bit and now we're going to put this on. Uh, there's a little bit of movement we have to do here. And then we have to get the handlebars uh, up and mounted. So they provide three Allen keys and then... 17, 14, 15, 13, 10, and eight millimeter, uh, as well as Phillips and flat. This is just, of course, the handle. So it doesn't have a multi-purpose use there. So we're gonna start, I believe, with the smallest one here. Now we like to show you what comes with it. I'm not saying that we won't ever use something that's not included in the kit, because we have found that sometimes our tools are significantly easier to use, and so we'll use those if we do that. We'll make sure to clarify 
Um, and like I said, just for the unpackaging, we used our own stuff. So this needs to pivot. Boy, that is harder than I thought it was gonna be to move. So put these bikes together, it's not real hard. Usually the worst part is actually getting it out of the box, mm -hmm. which sounds weird, but it's actually totally true. And every single e-bike we've ever done, we've had assembly of pretty much different various levels. Some it's a matter of putting a couple pedals on and you're done. I'm surprised with the folding bike, they don't fold this in transit. Yeah, I was surprised too. But, you know, with some bikes, it just doesn't make sense. It depends on the packaging and, you know, how they get the most density out of the package because that's how the rates are calculated nowadays. Um, but just to be honest, shipping is expensive right now. So if you guys have shipped anything on your own, it's crazy. So if they're building the price of shipping into these things, it's like probably over a hundred bucks for each of these. And that would be on a really good corporate account. Mm -hmm. So they are not light or small. No, neither. So check it out guys in the links of the video description below. Just torque these down now that I have it square with the frame. And of course this really isn't adjustable much here. This is pretty much just needs to be squared up and then ready to rock and roll. They do show a max six through eight Newton meters. And I do not know how you would measure that in this case without a torque wrench. Now I do have a bicycle torque wrench that I own and possess for my PPG system. And that is to torque the bolts on the propeller that goes 8,400 RPMs, like six inches from my face. So I do kind of want to make sure that one stays together, but on a bicycle, I think we'll be okay. we we'll just go as tight as you can get it. Um, that being said, if you want to tighten that down to the exact Newton meters, that's fine. Okay, so this is undone. I've got one more zip tie to cut here. We, want, we don't like to do things off camera as much as possible. Uh, and we get complaints and uh, praise for doing that. So hopefully we'll strike the balance to make you guys happy, whoever's watching this video. Okay, so I believe it goes like this. Now there is a degree marker on here, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't exactly know how to tell where this is gonna go. I think it has to do with your personal preference and then also the angle by which all this stuff goes together. There's an electric horn, that's cool. This will be the throttle. Oh, I feel like this is backward. Do we have this backward? But your brakes are gonna be on the outside of your hands. Is it a left-handed throttle? That's really weird. Huh. What, wait, is this throttle? No, oh, that's, that's the shift up, shift down. Oh, weird. That's really weird. And that's definitely facing the operator. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can't be completely wrong on that, can I? No, and the controller, the LCD display looks Which correct. this pivots, by the way. And the other night I was riding another competitive brand e-bike, no light. And I'm like, this is so dumb. I took the module, pointed it forward and used it to see in the dark. That was pretty cool. I couldn't believe it worked and it really actually did work well. Uh, because it was just enough light to get by. But if you have a headlight, it is so much nicer. It just opens up the possibilities for these things. Now this one says the max is six Newton meters as well. Okay, these are expensive hardware. Look at this, I'm gonna show you this hardware real quick because this has to come completely out. So we have a crush washer, which is like a lock washer, I believe. And then this is a modified, so don't lose that bolt. That's a weird bolt, okay? You're gonna have a hard time finding that. It's nice that all that stuff is labeled if you care. Yeah, if you care. Yeah, like, cause I do so much. <clears throat> so if you guys are new to Brian Phillips RC, you're like, what the heck are you doing with an e-bike? Uh, just wait longer, they'll be RC, don't worry people. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know that RC is why most of you are here, but we have more than one interest in our life. And one of the interests we have is of course, taking care of our property. And you're like, wait, aren't you doing an e-bike? Yeah, yes. that's right. The reason we use e-bikes is because we have 23 acre property and it goes on forever. And we love it, it's an awesome problem to have, but we have to get from here to there and we do it off road. And so that's why we're always reviewing these e-bikes is because it's just a part of our life. And so we share it. 
And we hope that you guys enjoy it. And I understand it's a little bit of a different thing, but we try to do it on Sundays, so it's not a huge deal. And it's just like a little Sunday afternoon extravaganza for those of you that are used to watching Brian Phillips RC and watching the wonderful camera crew keeping these 150 mile an hour airplanes in frame going six inches away from our face, just like the PPG gear. Okay, so we've got a hollow tube here. Looks like it's really nice. A Little bit of a nasty hole cut there though. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this on. So hopefully you guys don't get too bent out of shape about this. We know that the like ratios drop a little bit on these videos and so it's probably not gonna be your favorite, but just wait a little bit longer and we'll be back to our normal format, which is gonna be mostly fixed wing aircraft and then occasional helicopters, quads, that sort of thing. And if you've never tried an e-bike. Try it. <laughs> They're pretty fun. They're fun. <laughs> They're really fun. We went to the store, me and the camera crew, and we tried on a, an e-bike for size just to see, you know, I was like, okay, well, let's just see, cause I needed a new bike. And I said, you know, our kids are getting older. We need to kind of progress them through the ranks, so to speak. And anybody with family knows what I'm talking about. As your kids get bigger, this is kind of awkward, by the way. Can I help you in? Not really. Just, okay. just stay back so that I don't whack you on accident okay. with this. But anyway, we went to the store. We were uh, progressing the kids through the ranks. And I was like, okay, well, the oldest son can use my bike for a little bit. We'll see if I can get me a quality bike because it just never really fit me. It was too small. And I said, you know what? Let's try the e-bikes just for grins. And that was a big mistake because now, what do we have, eight of them, I think I said? Maybe so. And it's not that it was a mistake, it just, it was an eye-opening experience because I didn't really think it was, I thought it was the biggest gimmick ever. And it's like anything else that you do in life, you know, you try stuff and you're like, wow, that was amazing. Um, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, maybe quite as life-changing as flying radio controlled airplanes, but I definitely can say it's really fun. And the thing is, I know for a lot of you that are aficionados in the bike world, you probably sneer at the idea of somebody going 25 miles an hour without pedaling and being, you know, a quarter of their current weight. Um, in my experience, I just love being able to go quick. I love being able to jump on and drive it like a motorcycle without any license, like a motorcycle would require. Not that I would be opposed to getting such a license. We have every other license on the planet. But at the end of the day, I said, that is amazing. The first time I pedaled and it helped me with pedal assist. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? This is so weird. And uh, I think at the time we were looking at bikes that were like $3,900 or some ungodly amount of money. And I thought, what the heck is it so expensive for? And then we rode a few that were like in the mid 15 to, to 2000 I think they made like 1800 ish dollars and they were just like garbage compared to the 3500. So I'm like, wow, there's such a big disparity. And I was like, you know, at the time we were doing the YouTube channel and I said, you know, we're going to have to start doing these on the YouTube channel because there's no reason why we couldn't showcase these things in a good positive light and then help people to make a good choice because all this stuff looks good online. There is a, an alignment aid here. Which is really and nice. My understanding is that you, you probably want that relatively centered. Now I could be mistaken, but I'm just going to go with, they want it centered and that's going to give us some sort of a target to start at. Now we can obviously, we can make adjustments to that as we go. So anyway, story time with Brian Phillips RC. So we ride them and I'm like, Megan, you're trying this. And she's like, I do not want to try that. I am not trying that. I'm like, you're trying that. I did not want to. And so she tried it and she's like, wow, that is pretty cool. <laughs> it was. So then the next thing is, you know, you walk out of the store and you're like, oh, great. Now we just spent $7,000 on bikes. Well, thankfully we didn't that day because we found out that there is a plethora of better choices online. Now, granted, the big thing is there's a lot of bad choices online too. And we are helping you guys to not get one of them. So all you have to do is watch our videos and we'll tell you which ones are good and which ones are bad. Now, that being said, there is a progression. I'm just gonna tell you this right now. When you work with a, an e-bike, there is a certain wattage size. And as you get into the higher wattage, you're gonna get higher speeds, but not necessarily. Sometimes you get higher wattage and you get a big heavy duty bike that is just ridiculously heavy and you don't translate to much more speed. 
And I can tell you if you're anything like me, you're gonna get on and you're gonna try to go the maximum speed and you're gonna say, this is lame for the money we put into it. And you have to be careful because you're gonna get trapped just like a lot of people do getting a bike that looks amazing with this like hot leotarded woman in white. And you're like, wow, I bet she's going like 200 miles an hour. We'll come to find out she was going like seven and she's CGI. <laughs> so don't get tricked like the rest of them. That's why you sit here and you spend your afternoon watching Brian Phillips RC sweating to put his together because then you can turn around and you can say, okay, you know what? Maybe I will drop that kind of cash and I will buy it from the link from Brian because he helped me figure out if it was even worth what the manufacturer was claiming it was worth. And so that's how we could think them out. So also just like the airplanes, which same way we do with the airplanes and helicopters and stuff like that. We try not to pull any punches here on Brian Phillips RC. We want you guys to be happy with what you get in terms of content. We want it to be helpful and we want it to be something useful, not just some nameless, faceless guy talking about his experience on something that you have no interest in. Obviously, if you're interested in this, you're watching this. So if you're interested, we want to help steer you clear of what you don't like. But look at these, look at these shocks. They're amazing. They look straight off of a motorcycle. I know, they look really cool. That is awesome. And yes, they are adjustable. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I'm turning the spring and it's tightening the adjustment. That is so sweet. And there's a dampener in here. That is just amazing. I wonder if it's gonna stay square there. There's a huge bolt here. And the thing I'm really excited about with this particular bike, which by the way, this one's supposed to be eight speed. That'll be the first bike that we've had that's an e-bike that's eight speed, right? Most well, of them are seven. I take that back. I think we might've had more speeds on the first one we did. Mm, no, I don't know. They've small. all been just one gear set. Which, by the way, I just want to show you this. This is the foam that they're using. Look at this. I mean, I can't squeeze that. It's like... It's like... It's super. solid, okay? So that's the type of packaging you're getting here. This is not like one of our planes here. It's a very high-density foam, which would be sweet if they made the planes out of that. But anyway, the technology's changing on all the stuff we've been doing over the years. And so we're always excited to bring the latest and greatest here in such a way that you can learn from it and make good actionable decisions. And we like to help people to save a buck when possible, but also just help people work through it. You know, sometimes it helps to watch somebody else struggle with a project and then you can say, you know, is it really worth it, Brian? Like, is this something that, that I can do? And we're here to help you. Now, generally I would say if I can do it, you kind of know what type of skills I have, you know, in terms of assembly, in terms of flight. If you've watched the channel for a few weeks, you'll understand there's also protective cover here. I'm gonna pull off of this beautiful tail light. But at the end of the day, you know, my skills are not necessarily geared toward putting together bicycles, but I do know my way around tools and I can build stuff and I'm a technical kind of guy. So the thing is, I understand this stuff. So if I watch, if, you know, if you're watching me put this together and by virtue of watching me put it together, we're able to help you guys even a little bit. That's kind of what we're aiming for here is to answer the unanswered questions. The things that the marketing department doesn't like to talk about, like ah, make sure you avoid this detail. We don't ever do that. Okay. If there's something that the marketing department tells us to not talk about, it's like the first thing we look at. We're like, Oh, Ooh, look at that controversy. So we always try to bring up the stuff that they tell us not to bring up. And that's just what we do because there's no BS involved. We just want you guys to know if this is any good. I can tell you one thing I think about this bike is it looks really nice. It looks high quality. It looks heavy, but it, all, it looks heavy because it is heavy. And I'm a little bit concerned that it's so heavy, but I'm also really excited that they have this adjustability because if you plop like say, you know, some cargo that lives, has breath in their lungs, i.e. like your kid. Oh, good. I thought you were gonna say me. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know if this bike can handle us both. But the thing is, if you guys wanna bring your kids around, you know, obviously you're not gonna be going down the highway like this, then this bike might be one of the few that's gonna offer the payload 
to do that. <laughs> and so of course kids are small and they're light, so it's usually pretty easy to do that. Okay, so we have one more zip tie left on this bike. And then there's a number of zip ties from here and there that I noticed are actually holding together, but they use these doohickeys here, which is really nice. That's super cool, just to kind of tidy everything up. Mm -hmm. But it'll be easy to get those things off if you ever have to do a repair. And I can tell you this right now, these controllers, when you do have to do a repair, it's not a fun thing, but it can be done. And it seems like, ah, oh, you couldn't service that. Well, actually you can. And that's the other thing too, is it looks like this, this battery is probably removable right here. So you loosen that, and then that allows this to adjust. So I'm gonna just loosen this here. And then this comes, does this adjust up and down? Oh, there's a key right there. That's the key. That's the key. Okay, so that makes sense. So I'm gonna grab the, the circular key. So there's some sort of an ignition key, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and then this key. Okay, so this is going to actually plug into here, okay? I'm not gonna plug it in just quite yet. I do not like where that is either because it's right next to the wheel. But then it comes up here and it goes straight up to the controller is what it looks like. Then this is pay attention, interface the, pay attention to the interface docking, okay? So that's where you're gonna charge, I believe. This and one has two batteries, right? I don't know, that's a good question. I think it has one in the bar oh, and in the that's seat. that's probably why it's not folded because they only fold it to hide the battery. Well, anyway, let's figure this out. So this key goes in, I don't even know how the key works, but there's a little bit of a detent on the top there, okay? So it goes down like this. See how this works? Turn it. How does this work? There it goes, so it just unlocked, I assume. And then I don't know if I just don't have this loosened up enough, Oh, there it goes. Oh, good lordy, lord, lord. Goodness. Holy cow. Hell. So, there you have it, guys. Say hello to my little friend. So, there you go. So, as you can see, holy cow. Look at that. The max inserts, like, not very far out. Oh, lithium ion battery, 48 volts, 19.2 amp hours. Okay, and then this is an output for charging of the battery. Okay, so that's there. So now you don't have to have the battery present to charge, but you will have your seat on the top. And that explains why they have a lock here. Because for most of us, we're gonna probably wanna leave this in. That's the max, the min insert is here, okay? Ow. So I know. <laughs> what the heck? That would be so ridiculous. Can you imagine that? Look at this. Hold on. I just got to show the people. This is ridiculous. Look at that. That is so tall. Holy cow. And what the heck? You'd have to be like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I don't even think he could get on that. You have to be like 17 feet tall and the wheel's not even in yet. I know. Wow. Okay, great. Okay. okay. Well, oh, and then this, this would have to be like That's super stretched out. That's why that has to be out. so long. Okay, well, interesting. All right, so we'll come back to that in a minute. I, I shouldn't even be talking about these things just quite yet because we're not quite ready for it. But I am gonna go ahead and, you know, I feel like it's gonna tip over. So why don't we work on the, the front, but let's get this sunk down. There's the max insert right there. We do like a lot of adjustability though because mm -hmm. we have three people that ride. Oh, you can lock this whole thing, see? Look, lock it all the way, oh, boom. Nice. That's sweet. So then of course, if you have that tight, you won't be able to steal the battery, thusly leaving you stranded. Now that being said, if somebody steals your battery, that would suck really bad. Um, but the thing is you can technically still ride the bike. You would just have to stand on the pedals. It'd be not a very comfortable ride. Okay, so let's talk about this wheel. This wheel has a brake on it, it's your front wheel, okay? Oh, we do have a couple more zip ties here. One right here. Now that was just because of the way they put that in there, what it's set next to. And I'm really impressed with the packaging, but to be honest with you, it's nothing new on e-bikes. We've had pretty good packaging on all of them. Some, they have things like this that get broken, okay? On this one, they had a very thick and sticky high density foam like this, about doubly that thick. 
on the inside of the box. Now there's nuts here and here. And then a couple of like spacers. I'm not really sure what the deal is with all these pieces. Seems kind of strange to me. Why there would be so many over so here. So many. Yeah, why is there an extra pair of spacers over here? Can you tell? Does, did they give show them the show them the manual? These manuals can be somewhat useless. I think we probably have a fairly useless one here. Um, um it, it kind of like goes over a 10,000 foot view because they assume, you know, you're going to be able to figure it out. And truthfully, um, as far as I'm concerned, I would like the manufacturers to just totally insult my intelligence and tell me every single step Yeah. because that's really the way I want it. I don't there, want them to assume I know anything about bike building. There is no indication. It just says tighten the nuts with the multi-tool. Place the front fork and the disc brake seat, the axle stem properly with the receptacles at the tip, tighten the nuts. Okay. Nope. You handle the nuts, I'll handle everything else. Uh, okay. That's why we do so good together. It's just teamwork. The, I've seen worse manuals. Oh, uh, yeah. By the way. Hey, and by the way, we always try to go over speed control stuff. If we need to make changes to stuff, we'll talk about it at some point. I never know exactly when we're going to talk about it because it just depends on if we have problems. The last bike we did, we had to do a bunch of changes just to get the thing to run uh, at full speed. And, and honestly, I was really put off by that. But that's because they probably are operating out of a uh, some sort of a California. bureaucracy, a place that would uh, not prevent them from or that was not gonna let, I don't know how you're gonna break this free camera crew. It was California. See this, it was California. Well, yeah. these are designed in California. See this? So that's 17, but then you only have one 17 millimeter. So what I'm trying to figure out is I think you're having to leave that there because what they've done here is I think what they've done is they've made this stick out further, the stem possibly. I, just, I honestly just can't tell. Just taking the outside nut off. They just did off. two knots. I think we're just taking the outside nut off. And then this is going to bite here. Okay, okay, so just get those out. Get those all the way backed off like that. And then, yeah, that should be all we have to do. I don't know. That's, okay. I would like that to be a little bit more clear. This is always... This is always like a weird spot. Part. And we've had... Actually, will you throw me that black thing? I'm going to throw that under the shaft here. Okay. okay. So we're just going to lay this down here. And then what I need to do next is I have to break these nuts free. So I'm using the 17 millimeter... And nope, I'm sorry, that's the 15. I apologize, folks. The 17 does break it free. And these are just jammed together. Camera crew, if you could just keep a hand mm -hmm. on the side of the bike. So if you guys weren't already aware, my wife is the camera crew. I call her camera crew in the videos just to annoy the people that think it's stupid. <laughs> and uh, actually, it started off just as a big hilarious joke because it's just the two of us. It's always just been the two of us are actually less. It used to just be me. Yeah, you used to film a lot of your own stuff. Yeah, it was I just would terrible. film terrible. She hated it. Now, I'm just for some joking. reason, I got. Well, into this. that was when we had little kids. Yeah, our kids were smaller. And our little kids were sleeping for naps and stuff like that. And I used to do videos. Okay, so I'm gonna lean this. Okay. Drop this out. Yeah, and anyway, so I would go downstairs and I would wear this ridiculous helmet, and I would film these videos of doing repairs or modifications to the radio controlled airplanes and then it just evolved okay camera crew you're gonna have to go to the back straddle the wheel and then just shine the camera this way okay. now i have to go up pull this thing out and back down okay okay so that's just a shipping thing to keep the yoke from getting separated that is called the yoke right mm -hmm. okay then there is this red thing that pops out that keeps it open it's like a little shim placer and that holds the brake caliper open. So don't pull the brakes while you're doing this step or you're gonna regret it. Okay. Don't tip it. Like level it. There you go. Okay. Level it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna tip this up. This needs to go, obviously the, the disc needs to go into the slot on the disc brake. Uh, we probably could have mounted the light just to make this uh, here easier, but we'll just kind of twist that around more. All right, so now you're gonna keep that from tipping. Okay. This is always an awkward moment. So up we go. Run all the way in. Okay, I got the disc on. Okay, don't let go. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got the disc brake in. Of course, all these stupid washers. Don't move, please. Okay. And this is where the camera crew usually tries her best. But it's just, it's dang awkward. This is one of those spots where it would be nice to have another 17 arms. And I honestly don't know which way these washers go. I wish they would give us a detail on these because I think I know. But if you're wrong, you may have a bad outcome. And you do not want, see like I popped out. Camera crew, you're leaning on the bike, are you? Just get yep. off. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to move it a little bit. Okay. So this is a tricky part, and if you're doing this without a second set of hands, it can be worse or it can be better, just depending on what you've got it lined up. I'm trying to get it to drop down and it just won't drop. I feel like I'm bound on something. I think I know what it is. I just have to walk this nut out a little bit further. It's about to fall. Okay. Come on now. You know you want it. Okay, okay. Almost there. Okay. So we're gonna, this side will go. This side's still caught, so you can come around and film. I thought you were off of there already. No, it's just being. No, I. See this oh, washer? Yeah, it's it's bound on the way. washer, and I don't want to get my fingers pinched. Okay. So what I have to do, nope, nope, I'll okay. tell you when to do something. I need to pry that out. And so I'm gonna try this. See this? I just need to pop that out. So I'm gonna go in here and it's gonna fall. And I, yep, there it goes. There you go. Did you guys see what happened there? The washer was fighting me because it was, it was caught on this little detail. Okay, so once I've got that on, I can just go ahead and tighten this and then make sure that we're squared up. Should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so now, yep, I can pull the brakes. And if you show them right here from this angle, pull the brake, you can see the caliper grabbing. Nope. There we go. Grab it. Call it out when you're doing it. Pulling. Pulling. Breaking. Okay. Let go. Let go. There you go. See the gap? Pretty okay. cool, right? Okay. So now that we've got that in, I want to just roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. This brake is already on. So camera crew, can you grab me the side cutters? Yes. Okay, so that's cut now. And yeah, these handlebars are at totally the weirdest angle. I need to definitely change that because they're going like way uphill. All right, so the next move is gonna be, that is a big bike, holy cow. Look how long, look how long the front yoke is. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That means it's gonna be good for Absorbing wear and beating wear and tear. I just don't feel like you see it move. See how it's tipping? That can't be tight yet. I gotta tighten that. So I just want to spin the wheel a few times. Okay, now come back here. I'm gonna have you stand behind and just kind of straddle the back wheel and hold it with one set of hands and okay. the legs. Okay? Yep. Got it. Great. Perfect. Thank you. So now I'm just gonna torque down with the 17 millimeter. I'm just gonna torque this down. Oops, excuse me, 15. Yep, the 15. Okay, half a turn. There's another one, there's another one. Now there's no Newton meters on this. So you're just gonna have to use your best judgment, I guess. And everything is going nicely. Really nice matte black finish on this bike. I like the black on black, but it's gonna be hot. Okay, yeah. nice. And I think this comes, like the body of it is gray. I think it comes in a couple other colors. It does, it does. All right, so guys, we might take a quick second and get cleaned up and come right back. All right, so what we're gonna do, had to clean up a little bit, obviously. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this front light on and then we're gonna readjust these handlebars because we have these in the wrong spot. So first things first, I got a chair because now it's easy, it's convenient and comfortable and it gets me to the right spot. So I did off camera, I noticed that there was a protective cover on there and I was gonna pull it off and then I, I also noticed that this little thing is gonna snap right in here, I believe. 
I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's what's gonna happen, is it's gonna snap like that. But I don't wanna snap it until I get it in here. Because I think once it's in here, it's gonna be kinda hard to get it out, okay? So we've got that for the next move. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I've just wrapped it around. I wanna get that to where it looks nice and tidy. And then I wanna make a decision if I'm comfortable with that, or if I wanna come on down like this and go the other way. Because sometimes, you know, these things come and they're wrapped the right way and it's no big deal. And other times they come and they're wrapped the wrong way and they're gonna fight you the whole time you use them. And that looks like a better wrap to mm -hmm. me, okay? So this has a nylock, a washer, and a lock washer, all stainless hardware, which is nice. Star Union Wuxing, Wuxing, sure. Wuxing. <laughs> I don't know. If the Chinese could just hire one American person, to since name that's- name their stuff. Yeah, right, because that's where they're selling all their stuff anyway. They might as well. And then they would at least have a freaking clue how to say stuff. I am torn on this. Do I want this to go like that? It's a nylock. I, I don't know if it really matters. You could do washer. I mean, we got a good size hole there. So, yeah, I think this is probably right because it's gonna bite on the outside on the strong part of this frame. So we'll go like this. This is the right direction. We did actually look at the instructions for once. I know it doesn't seem like we look at instructions too much on Brian Phillips RC. That's because most of the time we know what we're doing and other times we just don't care. In this case, it's just more a matter of we did it off camera for a second. While we're cleaning up, sometimes we do that. Other times we share our experience of reading the manual, which is extra exciting. If you guys ever wanna watch a Brian Phillips RC where we actually read a manual, you are seeing the treasure trove. Okay, we do long format video here on Brian Phillips RC because at the end of the day, we know that there's a million short channels. If you wanna go see somebody do some cool trick on a bike that you'll probably never do and have no clue whether or not you should buy the bike because you're not a bike aficionado that weighs 150 pounds. You're like me, you're a 300 pound fat dude that wants to ride a bike. Then you're watching the right channel because at the end of the day, we do real life experiences and we try to bring some value and not just try to sell a bike to somebody who doesn't want the bike in reality. We're kind of here more to help you narrow your choices between the 4,700 different Chinese offerings. And keep in mind, one thing we have also noticed about these e-bike companies that they're a dime a dozen, there's a million of them out there. And so if you can find one that is good enough to actually send out bikes for a review, then that means they're willing to put themselves out there. We tell them up front, we're gonna be truthful about your product. If it sucks, we're gonna mention it. If it's terrible, we're gonna mention it. If we have a problem, we're gonna mention it. And yet they still work with us. I don't think they really understand that half the time, which is great. Hey, you know what I just noticed? There's no mud flap on this. There's not. What the heck? I hate putting those on, by the way. I know, I hate putting them on. But they are kind of handy sometimes. They're handy when there's like, say, mud flinging on you. Mostly it's whoever's riding back there that's going to get spotted. No, the, seat, the seat's going to work. Okay, yeah. so the next move, sorry, we got to put this little reflective. So this reflective is going to go right here. I think it just snaps in like this. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I got it. Yes, it is awesome. Okay, now I also noticed that on this light, you can adjust up and down. That's a big deal. We've seen some of the bike frames, you can't adjust the light. And so it ends up pointing off in La La Land and you're like, well, that's a useless light. And I'm trying to think of which bike that was. Well, I can't think of it offhand. So anyway, we're gonna do this. This thing I centered, okay? So let's consider this to be centered right now, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's just right in the bullseye. We gotta go way different than what we are right now. Oops, gotta get the smallest one. Now, if you have your own Allen wrenches, you could probably do this a lot easier if you were to use a ball link end, or not a ball link end, what am I trying to say? Just like a ball end. It makes it a lot easier because you can go at an angle and get around all these wires, cables, and of course we've got the uh, hydraulic brakes, hydraulic disc brakes here. So you've got lots of different things. There's plungers inside of here, and then you've got the hydraulic lines that go through, um, which is pretty cool. And it is nice when you've got good brakes on a big heavy bike with a big heavy dude on it and possibly a big heavy dude and like a kid or something. Excuse me, not a kid. I mean, uh, some additional payload. Cargo. Of cargo, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes, mind you, no difference if they're alive or not, um, depending on your territory and if there's rules against it. 
but we're going to have a good old time. And we'll try to share what we can share without being self-incriminating too badly. Now, I did notice also that there is a size that we don't have here, okay? So we got three sizes, and on the last few bikes we've gotten, they've come with a kit. You can see this one is almost tight, and this one is quite opened. Now, I'm not super worried about that, but I just wanna point out the fact that we're probably gonna have to tighten this. So again, just coming with the right level of tools is gonna make things a lot easier. It's just one connection point here. It just wraps all the way under and around. And this one here is just a little bit tighter. So we'll be able to get our, I would call that maybe a two millimeter drive. We'll actually grab one here shortly and make that adjustment as well. Okay, so now I don't have my seat on here yet, but I am gonna just turn this and I'm gonna get it to where I think I want it, which is probably somewhere in the arena of that, wouldn't you say? Or that, that, like something like that. That feels pretty dang good right there. So I would say that's good. We're gonna have a horn here pretty soon. That'll be super fun to be able to honk the horn. And by the way, I gotta say, a few bikes we've done, they don't even have electric horns and electric horns, if you're going 25, 23, 22, 28 miles an hour, it would be probably in my book, uh, necessity. Yeah. Okay, a little ding dong, ding a ling ding is not good enough when you're coming at 28 miles an hour and you've got, eh, let's call it four or 500 pounds flying at you. You know, you hey, kind of want to be able to, you know, like say, hey, get out of the way, deer. <laughs> what? I was talking about a deer. I know. Not you, honey. Hey, are you being blinded while you do that? I am blinded by the light. You better believe okay, it. Okay, while you're tightening, I'm gonna well, keep showing them what you're doing, but. I was just gonna say, I'm gonna get another tool anyway. Oh. And so we can talk about this for a quick second. We have a plethora of tools, as you guys know from watching us put these planes together. But this little kit is handy. And I think what we're gonna look for is, we'll show you what we use. Oop, that's five millimeter. This one here, I'm guessing it's probably two. This is three, let's see if that works. Okay, so three millimeters, is that gonna be right? Ooh, no, it's smaller than three. Um, okay, so we have four, we have 1.5, and we have two. Here's two. Okay, so two millimeters. Oh, it's the middle ground, folks. We need a 2.5 millimeters. Okay, 2.5 millimeters it is. Okay, so we'll just go like this. There it is, folks. Beautiful. And I know beautiful. Okay, so we'll just tighten that down. So 2.5 millimeters. And special thanks to one of our wonderful supporters. Rick sent these, right? Mm -hmm. So did. thanks, Rick. I know you said don't mention my name, so I'm not going to mention your last name, but Rick is one of our... Sorry, uh, wonderful supporters and he sent these american made i'm just kidding they're not they're chinese i'm sure but anyway they are nice thanks are, rick and by nice. the way he sent us a gift card so now that he's he sent us a gift card to eat at a restaurant and we're almost out and it was amazing and uh, was. now i'm gonna like need this bike to wear some of that off because it was for a barbecue <laughs> joint so thanks rick if you want to be like rick and support us we have Patreon and PayPal available, but we really like you just buying the stuff that we review, whether it's this bike or a plane or something that we've re reviewed in the past, like a weed whacker. Yeah. Because those are the ones blower. that really, they put us on the map, they the did. leaf blowers and weed whackers. Yes. All right, so this thing is almost built. I'm just noticing this one's taken a long time to build, but not hard build, just, you know, a lot of steps, okay? And to be honest, it looks really robust and nice. And I love the square frame. It looks like I'm actually gonna be able to straddle the bike, but <laughs> it's definitely getting so up tall. into the, yeah, it's getting up into the love area. So we're gonna definitely go forward a little bit and we've got good brakes so far. If you're gonna be riding around your kitchen floor might be a little bit slick for that. All right, so continuing onward, I don't want that to fall in video. So we have to put pedals on, we have to put seats on. I think we're gonna go ahead and go with back seat and then front seat. Why? Because I'm guessing, okay? Okay. So a couple of things to note about this. This is in much inferior quality to the actual rider seat. And so don't be off put by that. It's very simple, very basic. In fact, 
I sort of, it sort of makes me want to take it apart and put some of that black foam that I'm saving over there. That's right, <laughs> I'm saving it because I am that type of guy. I will come up with a project for it, but I think that would really help uh, make this thing more sturdy. But for I mean, now. The frame under it is pretty sturdy. So oh yeah, I guess... I'm not so much in sturdiness. I'm just talking about like in, this this bike seat seems really, really nice. nice. Yeah, it does. And this seems really cheap, you know, so whatever. <laughs> whatever trips your trigger. <laughs> So we're gonna put this together. I think we have to loosen this, I assume. I would guess so. So I'm still not 100% sure exactly how this works. Do you have to take it all the way out? See, it's got these bushings. Oh. They go, I, oh, I think you just loosen them, that's all. And then you slide them into the bigger side. Into and the then, keyholes? Yeah, that's right. I don't know, it literally just has to install it. That's install it. So it's like, if you don't know how to do this, no soup for you. Yeah. So you have to watch Brian Phillips RC. I, I grabbed You're it. Like, Huh? dead blind remote so i can't even close the blinds you can't no. close the remote i'll have to go get another one okay so what you see here is there's also a a nut cert that's inserted here okay so there's one that's gonna be like, like a safety lock it in yeah okay so let's make sure we get this right there's two reliefs cut here i assume it's kind of hard to tell what the front is can we assume this is the front I, yeah because it looks like we could do either way Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if it actually goes the other way. Well. Oh wait. Is there a picture on the manual? No, it's fine. Okay. I got it. Okay. There was a nice derailleur on the spike. I'm getting a good shot of it down here. Okay. So that slipped back. No problemo. But then, how in the heck are you going to get the screw in there? <laughs> it's going to be so awkward. Because there's like not really a great way to get in and actuate these screws. Hmm, that is a little awkward. Uh, what the heck? Which one does it go in? Oh, it goes over there. I got it backward. I flipped it upside down and then I got mixed up. Okay, yep, that's gonna hold it down. So the provided screwdriver is working. It's just not super convenient. I'd like to have a, you know, like a 10 inch screwdriver for this because then you can get down and away from all this business. In fact, we may kind of have to do that. Ugh, I hate to show the people at home not using the factory provided Chinese crap screwdriver. Let's see if we can make it happen. Let's okay. see if we can make it happening. Okay, so I am tightening at an angle and it's sort of maybe making, this is a Phillips, uh, Phillips screw. Now, one thing I wanna warn you about is I've seen this before a million times you get vibration, you're gonna lose these weird screws with these weird bushings, and you're never gonna know they're gone, okay? So one thing you might wanna do before you put your kit on there, or uh, excuse me, your groceries, cargo. your cargo, uh, non-living uh, groceries, you might uh, wanna just make sure that the chair is not gonna come off. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna hold it down, but uh, this is awkward, because there's just like not a good, good angle here. It's not hard, it's just awkward. I can actually see through and I can see what I'm doing pretty good. But we always think it's funny when the Chinese companies, they're like, oh yeah, we'll leave this for the American hands. And I'm like, why? No, no. There's a reason you guys assemble this stuff. It's because you have small hands, right? Is that, or is that, sorry, I'm not supposed yeah, to say small. that. Oh. Small hands. Oh wait, you don't have small hands. You have average sized hands for Asians. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, kind of the way it is, generally. Now I'm trying to find the hole. I'm, it's blind, so finding the hole blind is always awkward. So you never, never know I which feel. hole you're gonna find. Oh, there it is. Yeah, got it. Was that the right hole? Yes. Good. All right, so once we get this thing torqued, and that was a terrible experience with the screwdriver, <laughs> but it did, technically work mm -hmm. oh my goodness that's awkward okay so i don't know if you guys could see but i was turning this with like the tips of my middle finger and thumb okay now also i just want to show you this this is sweet is that an air-filled strut that is totally an air-filled strut that is freaking sweet look at that that is so cool okay that's the sort of thing that i would love to have a manual so i can know exactly how to do this but then as you tighten this, you're gonna, you're gonna make more resistive 
um, more resistance to, so your payload can be higher and you can keep the bike level, which is totally sweet. I wish we had that on all bikes. Okay, so continuing onward, we're gonna go ahead and get the seat on. This is always an awkward spot where I try to get it right and I almost never do. <laughs> I think on all but maybe one bike, I've gotten this wrong, okay? Sometimes it's come up in video, sometimes it's come up shortly thereafter. The last bike I put the seat on, and I think the first time I went around the house, it goes, Wah! or, Wah! and you, you don't want that. It's generally bad. Can I have the bigger Allen? Let's try this. Okay. I do like that. That seat is already helpful. Okay, so we're going to loosen this. This obviously goes like that. Okay. So you can make your rocker adjustment. Okay, big heavy galvanized bolt here. Not really sure why that's not stainless, but galvanized is good too. Of course, stainless would be superior, but more brittle. Galvanized has a little bit more meat to it still. Okay, so I think we can go like this and then twist, okay? Once you twist, are you gonna like put the camera like low where they can see kind of how that's going together? Yeah, there we go, see? I can see it. So spin, okay, spin, leave, then lower this down, then spin it back. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then, What's gonna happen is you can pivot the chair to the angle you'd like it to be. So if you'd like it to lean forward, if you'd like it to lean back just a little bit, you can do that, okay? Now, I would suggest probably just a little bit canted forward uh, for my comfort. Now, you might want it a little bit different. This is not gonna be a preference channel. Um, of course, you get to hear my opinion, but my opinion is that I like the way that the seat is angled. You might not, so do it the way you want it, okay? But I want to show you one other thing. This feature is nice. You can go back further or you can go forward further, okay? So that's another adjustment that you'll need to make. Now, these are not rocket science moves. We understand a lot of you guys that are considering a bike of this echelon are going to already understand these things. We talk about these things for the people that are not maybe so expert in mechanical things. So we're just trying to help. Hopefully you don't misunderstand. We never know who our audience is gonna be. And by the way, that is totally, I was going backward. Why the heck was I going backward? Mm. Well, I feel like in the olden days, you bought your bike, whatever bike, at a bike shop and it came yeah. assembled and it was done and you just literally took it home and rode it. So if you've never bought a bike that online. That was before chain. It was before the internet. When it was we before were... chain existed. Before chain existed. Just before the internet. Oh, it was before the internet. Before the interweb. Yeah. What is that thing? Didn't your parents buy you a bike from like Toys R Us and some like kid assembled it in the back room? Yeah, I'm sure we did. I had a Schwinn. It was awesome. Now Schwinn is owned by like Target or something or China. Kmart or China. China. Okay, so that actually was probably the easiest assembly on a chair slash secondary chair. Does it feel tight? It's look not at, look at the like, difference in height. Like. That's like a big difference. So I hope the back passenger, I mean, uh, cargo, non-living cargo is like way tall. And then where are they gonna put their feet? That's what I was. Are they supposed to just like wrap you like- Your groceries don't have feet. I'm it's okay. Sorry, yeah, it's true. I didn't think about the bananas. They could wrap <laughs> the around bananas can hold a little on. bit. I'm gonna actually, okay, so now that I'm done tightening that, I'm gonna just tighten it some more. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Then like maybe a little more after that. Okay, so like whenever I think I get it tight, just keep going. I'm just like seriously having trouble finding the hole today. Could you help me align it? I'm sorry. That's just uh, reach just around there and help me get it in the hole. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, we're doing okay. Goodness. <laughs> That's the way I always okay. do. I always do it that way and then I end up tipping it. Okay. All right. So we're probably gonna use this again and the 17 millimeters which is here for this. Nope, 15, 15, 14. Oh, I figured out where all those were labeled. Where? It's on the pedal itself. Oh, Hold right, yep. right. And it says 21. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a size class. I'm not into bikes enough. I just know a little bit about e-bikes. Okay. So, so hopefully whatever the thing says about turning it the right direction. That's left, see? Left, 21. Cool. Yep. Okay, so right, 
Right pedal. Okay, so I assume they mean from the drivers and not the passengers. That's just a joke, guys. <laughs> That's just a hilarious joke. Give me a break. I'm kind of simple-minded. Okay, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna take the right one first. That's left. This is right. Now, if you get the wrong side, you're gonna find out it's the wrong side because it won't go in. You won't be able to thread. No, I'm serious. <laughs> Don't give me that look. It's rocket science. It won't go. It, it no, literally won't go. And some people may not understand that. Now this one does not have a drive here, okay? So that's a little bit unusual. Hmm. Generally we have, we have a screw that we can put in there, but we don't on this one. So I guess I won't need that. Okay, so if you have this on the wrong side, it will not thread because there's forward thread and reverse thread. This would be what I would consider to be forward thread. And I gotta get my 15 millimeter size. There it is. And these things will play with your brain because you'll think you got it lined up and it just does not wanna start. And don't worry, just keep trying until you find the hole. And usually it's easier to just spin the whole dang thing. See, what the heck? After I've tried back and forth 17 times, it goes. Okay. It's not hard. And to be honest, that's one of the things we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we help show what would be maybe something that's right on the edge of people's capabilities and we help to reinforce whether or not they can do it. Uh, so we don't mean to talk down to you or insult anybody's intelligence ever. It's just that we have a mixed audience, people that have a lot of skill, a lot more than us. And then we have people that have very little skill, mechanically speaking, and uh, maybe they're skilled in other areas, obviously. But the thing is we wanna help by leaving no, un no, stir no stone unturned is what I'm trying to say. Well, and if it takes us an hour to build something. Remember, we're filming. And right, but if the manufacturer says it's gonna take 10 minutes, yeah. then you can kind of gauge. Hey, how are long you here to really help, Kat? Take. Hi, Ashy. This is Ashy. It's our boy. He is a nice cat. He's also very, very timid. He's scared of everything. He's not very useful, but he's yeah. cute and he, he's nice. He doesn't eat enough rascals outside. That's what we got. We got three cats. Um, how many years ago? Two. Two years ago. And I came home with these cats. I got Kittens. them for free because uh, I went to look, to look to buy a backhoe. And I didn't buy the backhoe. Short story. And they had a sign that said, catch them, keep them. So I came home with three cats to be vicious killers of mice. Four week old kittens. They were going to be outside cats. So how many days did they stay outside? Uh, zero days. Zero nights. And how many cats did we have six months later? 11. 11. So Bob Barker was on to something. <laughs> so anyway, guys, here it is. That thing is built. That wow. is gorgeous. It kind of matches our dining room set. Let's it just does. leave it in here. I'm sure. We'll that just... thing looks sweet, actually. I'm really excited to get this thing out and drive it. And generally at this point, what we would be doing is we would be starting the charging, but I want to see Kind of how this goes, that has a long cranks on there. That's, good lordy lord, I'm a big guy and this thing's huge. Um, okay, so, I need to unlock this thing so I can adjust the seat. Let's adjust the seat. Let's see how we got that first. So in order to unlock this, this is pinned through. So you have to put the key in, turn it, allow that shaft to pop up, unturn and then pull out. You see that pops up? Oh. That allows you to do that. Now, I'm gonna adjust that down quite a little bit. What? You're at the... The max insertion? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Why would there be a max insert? Yeah, what a joke. It, it doesn't matter. Sorry. China, you're wrong, you cheat. Okay, this is designed in California for anybody over 17 feet tall. <laughs> hey, gross. Quit spitting on that thing. It was you. Oh, it was me, sorry. So for those of you that don't understand what I'm talking about, oh, you don't need the key, you just press that down. I, that's kind of ridiculous. All right, so where is the key? Where does the key go, guys? Let's talk about this. Hmm. There's gotta be a key somewhere on here. Let's find the keyhole. There's a power button right here. And as you can see, oh yeah, that's sweet. You can see from the top, oh yeah, you can. And you can definitely see the brake light. Do you have to plug that yes. thing in? Okay. Yes, you do. But the thing is, I don't know where the keyhole is. Where is the keyhole? I literally, quite literally don't know this where the key is. This is the same hole wait, as the other one, right? Wait, the key must be for the frame. 
I bet that's what it is. No, nope, that's, that's where you- that's the same as that thing. Wait, hold on. Do you, do you plug in here or do you plug in there? I'm so confused. Or wait, mm. can you plug into either? Yeah, right. I don't know. Where let's just, it? let's just try sticking it in the wrong hole. I'm pretty sure that's not where that goes. Cause that is, is there like two choices? There's Did, two batteries. What the heck? That's plugged in. Okay, now. Okay. Holding the brake, there is a cat that could be viciously run over by this dangerous vehicle. So holding the brake, we have the power on. Okay, good, nothing happened. That's what I like. Okay. All right, the light is supposed to be auto sensing or something like that, I remember. The horn doesn't work. Okay, so now I'm gonna press and hold the power button, which is here. Oh, that is sweet. Oh, it is incredible. Wow, that is really nice. Oh my goodness. Okay, so zero kilometers. So we have to definitely change that. That is like really good on camera yeah, too. Wow. Vivid screen. <laughs> Show the cat. You can see him. Ash. Ash. Can you hear that? That means get out of the way. <laughs> All right, so then we have the shifters, trigger, trigger. You want to show the people up here so they can see what I'm doing. Very nice. As you can see, it doesn't want to change because the derailleur is not moving. So of course it's not going to work very good. We've got really strong brakes. Are those a Logan brakes? Mineral oil, Logan hydraulic brakes. Awesome. And then of course this is our throttle. So I want to make sure I'm going to hold the brake and just show you one trick. If you don't want to get run over, hold the brake. Nothing happens. Okay. So nothing happens. Good. All right, so I want to see what happens when I try to lift this again. If I lift it, nothing is happening, nothing is happening. So I don't know if this thing is on only pedal assist right now or if it's just maybe like not turning on because we have to do some function to actually get it to go. Oh, it says sport zero. I bet that's what it is. So there's a plus, there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, zero. So that's then on zero, you can go to walk. So it'll walk with you. Oh. There we go. So there's walking. Okay, so I'm just going to press and hold the bottom key. Okay, as you can see, it's definitely pushing. All right, so now what I can do, oh wow, that's cool. It's definitely telling me how fast it's going, which is sweet, even in the walk mode. That's cool. Okay, so it knows how fast you're going, which is nice and helpful. Oh, and we haven't even talked about the suspension. There is not only a front suspension, which is soft, I like that. There is a rear suspension and there's a main body suspension point, which is good. So it articulates in three spots. Okay, so now normally, let's go up all the way to five. I'm gonna hold up the seat. I'm gonna just give it throttle, make sure I'm safe. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's been that tire pretty quick. So it's always good to see that because sometimes what happens is China likes to stretch the truth just a little bit. And so we don't always see performance that we expect. We've seen it before, we'll see it again. I'm 100% certain of it. I am nervous about this too. I do not want that to dangle down there. So now you're telling me that there's another power battery up here? I think so. Okay, so I'm gonna hit power. Once you shut it off, it shuts off. There's also a power switch up here, okay? There's a light button, an info button, minus and plus. Turn on the light, actually. Oh, so you can see yeah. this is the light button, the power button. Yes, there, there you go. go. There's your plus. That's what you press to turn it on. Minus, and then, of course, the horn is off right now. This is your throttle. Okay. So let's go back here. Show them this. Okay, so this is pressed in. It clicks in. I have my power on. You can release by just spinning, and it comes out. Or... You can reach up here and you don't have to line it up really. You just kind of push it in, okay? Well, how do you line it up? There's only one spot where it lines up. Oh, it needs to go like this. Okay. So as you can see, now this is on. Does this turn on? Oh my goodness. That's crazy. So there is two batteries. Mm -hmm. So when you run the battery out here, you've got another battery here. All right, hold on, I gotta see this. Oh, we're at zero. Let's go to one. 
Okay, so that's gonna spin it at a slower speed at one than on five. Okay, so now the other thing too is, let's show them how fast it goes on each speed. So on speed one, so far, in fact, I can just pivot it on the kickstand, okay? Goes to 11.5 kilometers per hour. Okay, so then we'll go up. It's gonna go to 20, okay? Three. 29. Goodness gracious, that thing is wobbling around like crazy. There's four. Jeez. Cat, you don't know the cat, show the cat's look. Cat is like, what the heck is happening with that thing? Okay, speed five. <laughs> that is cool. Brakes. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna go to light. Oh yeah, look at the light, even though it's bright in here. Did it shut off? Here's the light. There it goes. Yep. So you can make it flash. Do you have? On. There's on. Oh, it must be intelligent. Like it knows what's going on. Because once you turn it on, it just realizes it's bright and it shuts off. It, it also off. dims the screen, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys could pick up on that. Let's go to info. Okay, trip time. 0.2 minutes. That's pretty sweet. Max speed, 55 kilometers per hour. Average speed, okay, total distance, trip distance, power, okay. That's sweet. All right, so then there is also going to be a button that's minus lights and power. Okay, so in order to power it off, you have to press and hold, and then you press it for just a second and it turns on. Okay, very good. Not an overly loud horn. I'd like to hear it be a little bit louder. It's better louder. than just a plain dingling. Yeah, dinglings are generally not enough to get the job done. How so, does the rear light work? Uh, the rear light is based on brakes. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. That one's always on, on the seat. And then your one back here oh, works there's one with back brakes. Here too. Yes. Yep, that's your brake, that one and works this is your brakes. marker. So it's a marker nice. and marker, as well as brakes. And it's solid on, right? Yes. And the thing that's cool about this light, and you guys probably can't tell in the video, but it's clear. And so when this glows, you can see it from a lot of different angles. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, of course, most intense from rearward, but that's awesome. And then do we have a reflector as well, or would we just, I think this is Wheels. also acts as a reflector yeah. as well. So really high quality bike, very big, definitely has a lot of adjustability to it. I think I need to actually pivot my seat just a hair. I am six foot one, okay? And so, like I said, I'm, I'm heavy. I'm like 300 pounds right now. So I, I bulked up just for this video. So I kind of need to adjust the seat down further. So why don't we go ahead and do that real quick. We'll do one more test with this. I'm gonna go ahead and power it off just to be on the safe side. And we're gonna get this thing charged up and we're gonna do some riding, but super excited to be bringing this to you. If you guys wanna help Brian Phillips RC and support our channel, the best thing you can do is buy stuff from the links in the video description below, you'll support our channel and our family of six. So just a little bit more depth. Okay, and then I feel like this needs to be tightened just even more. Okay, put that down. And now I've gotta just see if I can get my leg over. Oh yeah, that's, that's way better. I've got, with shoes on, I'll be plenty good. But now I just gotta get the angle probably up just a hair. That is a good size. Look how far my knee is from the handlebar. That is not the problem we had on the last bike. It was huge, really tall, and you had nowhere to put your knees. Mm. And also when you got off, watch this. Yeah, that's a little bit tight for, um, shoes are gonna help with that though. You and, have good ground clearance too though. But also this. Mm. So then how do you charge the second bike? How do you charge the second battery? I don't know. You definitely can plug in a battery charger here, but can you plug in the battery charger here? That's the question. Okay, so now what I wanna do, so that comes out. Boy, that's gonna be hard to unplug. Ugh. That one's like really awkward to unplug, but you can still spin it. See, it's just buried in there. So I would say that's definitely gonna be your backup job right there. Cause look, it's, it's almost kind of hard to do. Mm -hmm. See, this one's real easy to do. But then also I almost feel like this needs to go under. Like that will keep it out. Cause this is a pivot point here. 
Make no mistake, this thing moves. You could chafe your cable there. And nobody wants to chafe their cable. No. Which way does this go? It goes right there. Right there? Right there? Mm -hmm. Right there? Nope, Where's... so the, the cord is pointing down. Really? Nobody wants to chafe their cable though. I would be super careful. These retractable cables, you know, I don't want to have to fix that. That'd be no fun. There it goes. Okay. Oh, clicked. There we go. But then you see what I'm talking about? You want to make sure you get this situated in such a way that it's protecting itself. Because look, if that goes down there and that dangles in the, in the breeze, you could have a problem. So I would suggest getting that where you think you could have it safe. Mm -hmm. And then let's just... Let's just show the people at home straddling the, the back here, okay? Woo -wee! That thing, uh, I'm a big guy and it works okay for me. But I gotta say, where the heck are you gonna put your feet? Mm -hmm. I don't know, is there, are you supposed to, is there, is there some word that they suggest that you put them? Because I'm not seeing anywhere that makes sense. Because you can't put them here. I'm sorry, uh, your that's groceries. because it's only for groceries. Right. By the way, did you show them the, Show them this. Looks super nice. And I noticed we didn't have any protective covers for our front nuts. No. Kind of disappointing in that regard. My nuts are going to be exposed. But yeah, and then this is also adjustable too, correct? I can't tell. It's just an HLT shock. Yeah. So, really well put together bike. I want to try this, so I'm going to have you spot me on this for a minute. This goes forward, then it comes out, okay? Once that's accomplished, there should be a way to lay this down. I think generally you wanna have your pedals in the flat position. And then if this pivots, see that? That's how oh. you get your battery out, folks. Your spare, and that is so weirdly easy. Like, how is this so easy? What the heck? They're never easy like this. Look at this, look at this. Somebody designed this thing. It did just evolve. What the heck? Wow. Okay, so as you can see, you can get the battery all the way out. Also, here's your other key. This key is a regular key for that mm -hmm. battery. Okay, makes sense. Now, does this go any further? Because I'm, I'm actually not sure that it does. I, I would think tell. it would fold like almost, should it keep going? Oh, you only charge it from one spot. Must. Okay. Okay, so I think this would be one of those times where like a manual in English would be handy. See, I'm hitting my kickstand. But that is like. That's a big bike impressive. in a tight spot, guys. I mean, it's not, it's not gone. It's definitely not nothing. But that's a big bike that's in a pretty small closet now all of a sudden. So definitely cool. Um, also, if you need to ship this thing somewhere, you could actually undo one spot with two screws, pivot your handlebars, and it would take even less space. Mm -hmm. But that'll go in the back of a lot of cars, I'm sure. It is heavy, though. It is. So, okay, now I'm going to use your help to make sure I get this out in one piece. Okay, so I'm going to just walk it out, see if I can do this myself. I'm going to sit on the chair, sort of, and I'm just going to kind of hold it. Let's see if I can walk this back. Yeah, so far so good. Now that we're into this position, I'm just gonna keep walking, mm -hmm. keep walking. What the heck? That was like weirdly actually worked. I totally was dreading that, thinking it was not gonna work. Okay, so then this, you just kinda hold that with your finger for a second. Let that drop down in there. Except, not do quite, you? quite close, I don't think. See, that goes like that. Oh, am I not? <laughs> there you yep. go. There we go. Okay, so there it is. Done. Wow. That is so cool. I love the fact that it's heavy duty frame and it folds, but I hate the fact that this knuckle is right here. Because like, honestly, I would think that uh, guys that are writing this are gonna find that to be uh, a little bit close for comfort. Oh, one more adjustment. I am going to further adjust, and you guys don't have to stay along for it, but I'm gonna take a second and adjust the seat more vertical. So if you find that you want that more vertical, I'm just gonna show you that you can do it while it's fully assembled. 
because this is the one that I complained I always make a mistake on. Let's see if we can take this off. That'll get out of the way a little better. Oh yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. Okay, and I just wanna walk that, walk that forward just a little bit, okay? Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. We got, oh yeah, there it is, there it is. See, I didn't need hardly any. Does that level it out or mm -hmm. do I need to go more, you think? That leveled it out more, that but do you want to go like one more click? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think we're going to try that. Okay. All right, guys. So there you have it. So this is the X26, right? Mm -hmm. So the X26 from a new. A new. That's where we're going. We a know. new. A, a new. A new X26. So. Check it out in the links in the video description below. If you guys like to support Brian Phillips RC and our RC endeavors and this sort of thing, then check it out in the links of the video description below. You can buy one for your very own. We are gonna reflect in the manual for a moment and see if we can figure out how to reprogram this to be in miles per hour instead of kilos, kilometers an hour, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. Uh, we looked in the manual and the camera crew is gonna help me do this. We're just gonna turn on our bike. I did get this one more click. And once we turn on the bike, we'll go ahead and power it on by pressing this power button here. Come up with this uh, cool screen. You can see your percentage of charge. You can see the speeds in kilometers an hour. This is not a touch screen, just so you know. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be following a simple set of instructions to go in and out of the menu. And the camera crew will show you, and then you can pause the screen if you need help. To get into the menu, you're gonna long press the plus and minus combination buttons okay. for one while second. static. Yes, while you're static. Okay. Okay. All right. So then up and down with plus mm -hmm. and minus. So we don't want to clear any data. We want to go to okay. that takes you out. So pressing and holding, plus and minus. So we want to go to setup. Okay. Setup. Set unit is gonna change from imperial. There we go. Okay. Set then the brightness. Auto. All right. Okay. okay. Auto power off. Uh, 10 minutes, nine minutes. I don't like the auto power off because it's just annoying. We live in the country. People don't steal bikes around here. Okay. Speed limit. Yeah, 16. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. We'll see. Sweet. Okay. Back. Yep. Personalization. And then personalization. Do you want the auto headlight on or off? That was the only one I was thinking What's we might this? change. What's CRU? CRU, it doesn't say. Show them. Oh, cru page. cruise control. Cruise on control or on or off. Now, generally with cruise control, you press and hold the throttle for a few seconds. Once you're running, it will cruise control, which is super nice. Mm -hmm. Or you can turn it off and know when you're going to have throttle. Now, on this bike, I just want to show you, we have a throttle like this. I'm going to hold the brake while I do this just to be safe. If you press that down for a few seconds, it's gonna turn on and stay on, okay? When you uh, brake, it will cancel the cruise control. Cruise control for me has been nice on most e-bikes, especially if you have a twist style throttle. This has a thumb style throttle. It's on my left thumb, which is weird to me. Although I wonder if that's like more of a motorcycle thing. I don't know. I've never driven a motorcycle, but I know there's like a clutch on the foot and then there's a throttle, but I think it's on your right. So this is the first time we've had throttle over here. It's mm -hmm. always on the right side, but because of the trigger up and down on this uh, Shimano gearbox, I don't think they could fit it maybe or something. Maybe and there will be an indicator when you're cruising. There mm -hmm. is a little indicator. Yeah, I'll up show here. them. It's right there. Okay. See, oh, on, yeah, there you go. off. Okay. Then so the automatic. ACF mm -hmm. is reverse charging current. Nice. So yeah, so that's why it went from 66 up to 72 or something. And it'll show you on your little power monitor. I think it's green when it's doing. Okay. When so, it's doing. so so basically the, the automatic charging force. So it's braking that's actively recharging your battery. Pretty cool. Yep. Okay, auto headlights on, off, on, off. Okay, power set. If you want to change, you can change your change values. Your this is like the most user-friendly controller we've it ever is, had. Most definitely. Okay, so power one twenty-two, then thirty-five, then fifty, then seventy. Uh, yeah, why ninety-nine? I want that to go all the way up to hundred. 
110, dang it, okay, well that's <laughs> fine. So many of you are gonna find that you never really wanna limit your power lo levels. Um, so I've seen several of these. You can go from zero to three, or you can go from zero to three. You can go one to nine, you go zero to nine, or you can go one through seven, okay? One through seven, zero through seven, one through five. I'm probably gonna do, probably gonna do zero through three, because it is nice to be able to turn it off, okay? So now I am gonna have those levels and just uh, gonna run that all the way up to 100. And I'm just gonna do this, uh, what, is, what is this? It'd be like 60, 66%. Let's do 66 and then let's set this one to like 50. Now let's do 75, that's actually a good spot. Yeah. I like that spot. Because what's gonna happen is when my kids ride it, they're gonna wanna have something less um, intense, okay? So then you just walk all the way down to back and then walk to back. And then system info, you can see what the, the H, HMI, human machine interface. And very good, okay, so That's now it. we're gonna walk all the way back up. If you wanna clear is. your trip, then you would clear your trip Just data. flashing my lights at you. Flash Pretty cool. So also, cool. let's just show you regenerative braking camera crew. If I would have you be so kind as I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna have you spin. She's gonna, she's gonna spin. I'm gonna do the what? Thing. Spin. Oh crap, hold on. That won't work. I gotta, I gotta hit this one. So I gotta have my hands on the different side. Okay, you ready? Okay, so now I'm spinning? Yep, spin. Okay. Yeah, not enough. No. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to carry some momentum yeah. into a hill and then it's gonna show and that. that bar will turn yep. green. So I'm gonna pick this up and just show you the charge meters at 65. Okay, so we're in zero, so I'll go up to one. Well, that's a lot of torque. Goes right to 16, 17. Okay. We'll just go to three. So I'm not sure why it's not going. You're breaking? You know what it is? Hmm. No, I'm not breaking. Hmm. So you remember how it said 96% or something like this? Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens when we try this from zero. Nothing, what the heck? We're definitely on. So let's go into the menu. So plus or minus for a second. Okay, let's go to setup. Speed limit. Okay, so that's good. And that's okay. And then let's go back. And let's go to system info. Back, personalization. Power set, zero through three. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't like 100%. Because you notice that they weren't at 100? Oops, mm -hmm. sorry. There's 99, so let's try that. Back and back. Okay, so let's try it again. We're still in three, I'm gonna just lift it off. What the heck? That's very weird. Okay, so break, break. Let's power cycle and see if anything changes. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna turn it back on. Who knows what's happening? We'll try again. Zero, there's one. Tons of power, two, and three. So it's 33.2 miles an hour. That's pretty good. And we've braked. Okay, so evidently, okay, so we learned something together and that's what we do on Brian Phillips RC is we take the Chinese manuals and make sense of them. Although I must say this manual is a little bit better mm -hmm. than what we've seen in the past. Although it's definitely printed in China because you can just tell. And I can definitely say this thing has the most user uh, friendly, yeah. most intuitive menu structure that we've seen today. Definitely. So very happy with that. Can't wait to get this thing out and drive it, but let's talk about charging for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and power this down. Okay, so it's off. Now we have an outlet in our island here. So I'm gonna talk about this for a second because I've noticed this is a problem on some of the cheaper ones that we've seen. This is long. Sometimes this is short and then this thing hangs in the air. You want that thing to be on the ground, especially if you're charging on a, a concrete pad or something. You can put that down and dissipate heat on the floor, which is nice. And then this is also long, which is nice because again, you can get up to where you have to charge at, okay? So you can, of course, take the whole thing out, but in our case, I'm just gonna pop this right like that. I'm gonna stick this in. Yes, you'll notice that the light is on for some time because that is currently off, but it must stay charged for a while. And let's go ahead and lay this on the ground. Pay attention to what that does. I'm mm -hmm. gonna plug it in right now. Okay, so it's plugged in, we got a green light. 
Generally that light changes to red when it's yeah. charging. So it's an intelligent charger. It's gonna take care of all the different mixings and things that have to happen to get that lithium ion, correct? Mm -hmm. Battery charged. So we'll let that charge for a little bit now. I don't know if we can, it's just strange because it says that light is green, but it's not technically I on. I pushed it. That's on. No, that's on. That's off. So I don't really know what that means, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if this turns on whilst it's charging. Yes, yes. That is very interesting. Hmm. So again, not really sure what's going on, but we have the same apparent level. It's at 74%. So we're gonna let that thing charge for a little bit and we'll be writing it in no time. And we hope you guys have answered all your questions about this anew X26. We're excited to bring it to you and we appreciate you working with us anew and we appreciate you putting yourself on the line for your customers to see what they're gonna get from what would be basically an unbiased party here um, with no boundaries. So we appreciate that. If a company is willing to put themselves out there, um, we generally believe that they have something that's worth looking at. And if they're not, uh, probably not so much. And some of these companies, they try to tell you what to say. These guys haven't done any of that, which is really cool. In fact, they've been good to work with. They basically just uh, set it up, got it to us, and they said, have at it. So that's good. So we'll try to break it and uh, let you know how it works. So hopefully you enjoy the process. And if we've answered any of your questions, uh, smash the like button there. And if we uh, are one of your favorites, we're glad you're here with us. Don't worry, we'll be doing more fixed wing aircraft in no time. We have tons of them coming. We have so much we can hardly keep, keep up to be frank. And so these things are just a little bit of a side passion that we love to bring in front of you because we all love electric stuff that flies in the air, it's super exciting. And this is kind of the same thing, but we're trying to get to the upper echelon. We're trying to sort through and sit through the sea of Chinese garbage and bring out the best stuff to the top. And hopefully at the end of the day, you'll be able to watch one of these videos and find a bike that you like. By the way, I didn't mention how wide the tires are. Are they four, They're four. four inch four tires? Four by 26. Mm -hmm. Four by 26. And by the way, four by 26 on a guy like me looks about right. If you're six foot tall and you're running a 20 inch bike, it looks like some sort of a scooter. Um, and that's not to say that you can't enjoy them. We do and have done 20 inch tires, but if you're doing 20 inch thin tires, it almost just looks ridiculous. So you might want to keep that in mind, especially if you're my size, if you're not super thin and uh, you've got a little bit of oomph to you, uh, these bigger bikes are going to definitely get the job done. But I, I definitely must say there's, there's a little something going on here. So I'm hoping that that doesn't become a problem. It is definitely big. So, and also, I don't know if you guys saw how high that chair came out, but that was a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. And also, I'm still not 100% sure why you can't grab further up. I think what it is is that they must have less material toward the top end, or that's where the connectors are, and they're concerned about it breaking. But I got to admit, I'm 6'1". I'm not like a small guy, and I've got it like all the way in. So past the maximum penetration point as often as possible. So all I'm going to say is this thing looks sweet. We mm -hmm. hope you liked it. Stay tuned so much more from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching.